what's up this afternoon everyone welcome 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 fine tuesday to you all good to see ya good to see ya good to see ya what is up cat cam fan rollish christmas drill <laughs> how do you end up with christmas is your twitch name how do you end up with christmas did you sign up for twitch on christmas or something that <laughs> there i'm used to so many so many nonsensical Twitch names, and that's just Christmas. Christmas, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Nailed it. Old Town Dad, Carlton Bake, Lucid. How is everyone today? Hopefully everyone had a spectacular week, an amazing weekend. I need to know what we're thinking about, uh, about murders at Karlov Manor. I'm like so all over the place on this. Uh, I will say my hype level has increased as spoiler season has gone on. Going into it, I was a pretty like five kind of, eh, you know, whatever. And it's been slowly creeping up the more I see of this set. This has some really cool cards. It has some very interesting mechanics. I, I need to know, how do we break this card yet? This is, I've been waiting all day ever since this card was spoiled, to ask you, how do we break Expedite Inheritance? There's gotta be a way, right? There's gotta be a way to break this card. I don't know what the way is. I haven't figured it out yet. Wow, that is a really big Expedite Inheritance. Maybe that's the unsmart way of doing that. But how do we how do we break Expedite Inheritance? So Expedite Inheritance, if you haven't seen this card, it's one of the spoilers from today. It's a two red enchantment that says, whenever a creature is dealt damage, its controller may exile that many cards from the top of their library. They may play those cards until their next end step so obviously hey what's up stone raid how are you good to see you good to see ya i mean so obviously this can generate a ton of card advantage right like you put this on the battlefield with some random creatures in like blasphemous act and you just draw your entire deck the challenging part is yeah so mono red mill that was my first thought but there's one problem and it's that word may so you can't like give your opponent creatures and mill them out because they'll just be like no nah, i'm not gonna draw this time that makes it so much if it wasn't a may ability i'd be all about like dagger burning like give you the creatures blasphemous act mill yeah the game would be so funny uh that doesn't actually work though because it's a may ability i guess you can, like draw your deck in Thassa's Oracle it's just so boring though who wants to who wants to win with Thassa's Oracle but uh yeah I'm I'm very curious I gotta figure out a way how to break this card I gotta figure out a way I haven't figured it out yet but I'm going to uh, dagger bird yeah we got another hunted too which made me think uh if there's another hunted card maybe dagger bird needs to come back since we uh, got another way to give our opponent creatures so <laughs> Uh, anyway, today we're going to have some fun. We're going to play some timeless. We're going to talk about, eh, whatever, uh, except for the Bills game. No talking about the Bills game. <laughs> we don't talk about that here. But mostly, we got to talk about murders, some of these new cards. Oh, the other card I got to talk about. Hey, what's up, Ludi? How are you? So, Anzarag. See, I, I do the spoiler video, so I get to share my opinion on the cards. I get to hear the opinions of, like, you know, the internet's the goldfish crew. McGeary and Arocalypse, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you think uh, the non-rotated standard cards dampen the hype for murders? Uh, five in the middle somewhere like i think it does have an impact uh for sure i think you can see that very clearly with some cards like you see a new wrath and you're like there's already nine of these in standard do i really need <laughs> do i really need another to populate watsy or like the dual land cycle would be really hyped if it wasn't for the fact we still have triomes so i think it affects certain cards but I don't think it, like, ruins this as a whole. Lucid, welcome to the fishbowl of Rocklips. Welcome you as well. Makiri, welcome you. Big uh, scoops cheer for all you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So the, the Bills did repeat the 19... I know, that's one of my earliest memories as a very young child is the Bills missing that Super Bowl kick. <laughs> and that's been the story of the rest of my football-loving life. <laughs> So I gotta, I gotta ask you. So what I was saying is I, I get to know my opinions on cards. I get to be able to uh, see other people's thoughts from like the goldfish crew, but I don't really have some place to bounce things off of as much. So I need to know what you think about Anzarag. So my first thought when I saw Anzarag was this card's way more busted than it should be. Like it, I, I was expecting when they say mold God, it's a meme. <laughs> Am I getting wide righted? Oh my God. Go back to Kansas city, Alia. <laughs> I will I will smash a table in front of you. <laughs> Venix, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I wonder if the reason cons will spin on arena last month is because Murders is using morph and delve mechanics and wanted to prepare uh, for those mechanics thoughts. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. If you think about it, here's what happened. I will, I would, I would bet money on this. I will bet money that this is what happened. So I would bet money. If you think about, <laughs> if you, <laughs> it's so funny. If you think about, uh, if you think about this set and what's not on arena, this set is based on a couple of big mechanics. One is disguise slash cloak, which is upgraded morph and manifest. The other is collecting evidence, which is a twist on delve wizards had not put delve or morph. I don't believe if I'm missing something, correct me, but I don't believe that morph face down stuff like morph or uh delve was on arena so i think wizards knew that they were going to make this set that had these morph mechanics in this delve like mechanic and they were like you know what we might as well like just do cons since we're gonna have to program <laughs> we're gonna have to program all this stuff anyway so we might as well just put cons on there so i think that certainly played into it i think that was certainly a big part of it i also think it was partly to make timeless work like i think they needed the fetch lands added although i could have done it in a different uh different way yoda man and sharks Keep moving. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I also thought about it for a second that once Sphinx where you collect evidence, 10, the mana base should include MDFCs since they'll be lands when you need them, evidence when they're casted or milled. Yes, MDFCs work really well with that land cycler, some of the channel cards, anything that's going to put things into your graveyard for value works really well. Dog Amits with the gift subs to Max J. Welcome to the Bowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup care for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I promise we're going to play Magic. But wait, where are we at on Anzarag? So Anzarag... I missed your bits. I'm sorry, W. Uh, Van House. I will. I will give a look for your bits. Um. So, so is this card actually good? So I know it dies to Doomblade. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh. So the my question is the like when I saw it, I expected it to be a total meme, like an against the odds card. But this is a four mana eight four that can theoretically win the game in a single turn with its ability if you can build around it a little bit. I will say it's way better than I thought. Like, sure, maybe it just dies to Doomblade and that keeps it from being too busted in 60 card formats, but I'm way more hyped and impressed with the Mole God than I would have expected. Also, chat, you need to help me with this too, since we're talking about the Mole God. I mentioned this on the podcast yesterday. Why is this a god? What makes this a god? What does god mean in magic in 2024? When I think of gods in magic, they're indestructible, right? That's what they've always been. There's some sort of indestructible. We saw the like MDFC versions. If it dies, it comes back on a land. You can flip it back around. We saw the put back in your deck version, like three cards from the top with Scarab God and so forth. We saw it go in the graveyard, come back with the Scarab God. Uh, we, uh, we've seen all these different versions, but gods are somehow indestructible. You can't kill the gods. That's the whole point of gods. And now we get Anzarag, and we also got uh, whatever the two drop, the ancient one is. They're not, they don't feel like gods to me. That's a, it's a mole. Also, <clears throat> is a mole god, does that mean it's a god that is a mole or it's a god that's worshipped by moles or both? <laughs> I imagine they just got a whole mole civilization under Ravnica that's <laughs> that's worshipping Anzarag. But maybe it's just a god that is a, maybe it's just a god that is a mole. That's also, I mean, it is a mole. <clears throat> but is it worshipped by the humans of Ravnica or is it worshipped by the moles of Ravnica? Is this like the mightiest mole and they all worship it or... <laughs> All oh, hail the mole god. <laughs> it's worship by moles. If it's worship by moles, is that the worst god you can be? Honestly, like, <laughs> like seriously, if you got to be a god and you're going to be worshiped by something, is there a lower tier than mole? <laughs> like, seriously, elephant god, I take that. Giraffe god. <laughs> mole god, though. Seriously, like, <laughs> got the short end of the, the god tier list there. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyways, reminders, and we'll play some magic, and we'll talk about this as we go along. Replay YouTube, that's we invite the whole streams, including this one in the future. Worm God, oh, Worm God. Oh, we need a Worm God. Hmm, now I kind of want more gods, honestly. <laughs> normal youtube spoiler coverage tomorrow's against the odds is a good one. Oh my goodness tomorrow's against the odds i'm like oh i'm so hyped for this one so tomorrow's against the odds is a deck that has literally never been possible to build in magic's 30 year history but thanks to some recent quirks with rotation being canceled with wizards loving commander it's actually possible to build this deck 
for I believe the first time ever in Magic's history. It sounds so janky and hilarious, but oh, it actually kind of works. Oh, it's going to be such a good one. Tomorrow's Against Odds is a, a really, really good one. So make sure to check that out. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And maybe you need some magical cards from your own, like from Murders of Karlov Manor. Or, eh, I don't know, Ravnica Remastered, Ixalan. You can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash Goldfish. If you get a free goldfish sticker, just let them know you bought one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. I can't tell you what it is that ruins the surprise. Do you think Kaya could be good tech against Graveyard Hate? Outside of the things you exile yourself, I just noticed that it triggers whenever a creature gets in exile. Is in your opponent's exile them? What do you think? I think that Kaya, I, it is such a weird card. I think that Kaya is either going to be like straight up broken and like top tier, really good card, one of the best cards in the format. Or it's going to be stone unplayable. It is hard for me to imagine that this Kaya is somehow in the middle. Where it's just like, oh, it's like a good card that I'm going to put in my deck sometimes. I don't know how this Kaya ends up there. The Kaya is so weird. The thing I'm worried about with Kaya... Hey, what's up? Welcome to the stream, Vito. You know? Good to have you. Good to have you. Um, the thing I'm worried about with Kaya is there's just so many hoops, right? It is kind of self-contained if Kaya sticks on the battlefield. But you need to have a you need to have a kaya and then you need to have a token and then you need to have stuff in the exile and then you need to exile it, and your reward is your token turns into it temporarily so i feel like it's kind of like a combo card more than anything like you got to be able to build your deck where my token's an emerkel now when you die my token's a whatever some massive thing that's going to close out the game and you die it seems like it's going to be really tricky to use but if you can it's going to be really strong so all that to say i don't think i is a card that you just play hoping your opponent's going to graveyard trespass or something from your graveyard and then you're gonna you happen to have a token and happen to be able to turn it into something good into lend turn this seems like you need a lot to go right to make uh to make that plan work hey what's up jkr how are you good to see you good to see you do you think case of gateway wait case of gateway these cases are so funny someone mentioned this earlier <clears throat> that the stakes have significantly lowered in this set we went from the phyrexians are going to destroy the multiverse everything in existence will be will be one will be destroyed by the phyrexians to uh the case of the locked hot house <laughs> <laughs> what what is going on with the great mystery of the case of the locked hot house what is a hot house that's the real mystery i don't wait actually i'm being serious what is a hot house i don't even know what it is the case of the ransack lab oh no <laughs> some someone made a mess in the lab the case of the crimson falls the case of the uneaten feast why didn't they eat mm -hmm. <laughs> This and more in a uh, murders at Karlov Manor. What uh, what one were you supposed to be looking at? Gateway Express. All right, Craze of Gateway Express. Two mana. When it enters the battlefield, choose target creature you don't control. Each creature you control deals one damage to that creature. To solve it, attack with three or more creatures. If solved, creatures you control get plus one plus zero. It's fine. I think it's like an okay removal spell for go wide decks. I like that you get a little upside out of it. So the downside is it's a sorcery speed removal spell. There's a bunch of removal spells like Cabria Takedown essentially does the same thing at instant speed as MDFC. So there's a bunch of removal spells that's like deal damage equal to the number of creatures you control or whatever. Uh, so as removal, it's medium, probably below curve a little bit, but you get the upside in your creature deck that it's a removal spell that also eventually turns into a bad anthem. So I think that flexibility might might actually might actually make it worth it terrible templating yeah i noticed that with this set and i've noticed this in previous sets is wizards getting worse at wording magic cards i've been trying to i've been trying to figure this out because i feel like the wording on magic cards is getting less clear the cases are a good example of this the first time i read cases uh, the way I read this, go back to the spoiler stream last week when we were uh, seeing these cards for the first time. When I first read it, it sounded like, okay, if the case is unsolved, you go to your end step and it gets solved. Like the reminder text in there, I actually think makes it less clear, especially at first, than makes it more clear. So I feel like the wording on magic cards have gotten worse, but I haven't figured out if Watsy is getting worse at writing words or if it's just cards have like are getting more complex and have so many words it's gonna happen no matter what is it that the cards are designed for digital and Watsy is just like less on top of it than they used to be but I have also noticed that as well also chat <clears throat> we're, we're not even getting to magic yet 
so we have another cycle of split cards the split cards the whole gimmick of these cards is the two words if you put and between them are supposed to uh are supposed to form a phrase. Let me see if I can go to multicolor here. Are supposed to form a, 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 a phrase. That's kind of the gimmick of these split cards. So, for example, if I can find any... Are there not any split cards? Where do they all go? Uh, anyway, uh, you can tell they've gotten pretty far down the... <laughs> down the list of words because the phrases are getting more and more obscure oh we got new cards the phrases are getting more and more obscure what is flotsam and jetsam <laughs> what is wh what is that phrase even is that like an iconic flotsam and jetsam does anyone know what that means <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. They've gotten so far down the list of these cards. Foam on the Sea? It's a band? Someone didn't read that. I have not read The Hobbit. I'm, I've been clear. I've been very clear about that. Uh, nautical Turbs. No, nah, I'm, I'm not a sailor. Flotsam is shipwreck cargo. What's Jetsam? Oh, they're like real made up words? Oh, Jetsam has cargo thrown overboard. Interesting. The card's actually kind of sweet, though. I don't know if it's sweet for 60-card formats, but for uh, 1v1 formats, this side, Jetsam, each opponent mills three, then you can cast a spell from each opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If a spell uh, was cast this way, it would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. So this is kind of wild, right? If I'm understanding this right... Each opponent mills three cards. Then you may cast a spell from each opponent's graveyard. So it doesn't say a spell that was milled by it. It also doesn't say like instant or sorcery spell. Like anything's a spell, right? Anything is a spell when it's going on the stack. So does this mean you cast this for six mana and then you just get to cast the best thing from each opponent's graveyard for free? And it doesn't even have to be one of the three cards milled. It can be anything in the graveyard. Isn't this card, like, absolutely busted in Commander? And then you even get the, the cheat mode of mill three cards and investigate, which this is, like, a really bad cantrip. Jetsam, to me, seems wild. Like, I, I feel like this could be a Commander staple. Like, especially if you're some sort of self-mill deck or mill deck where you're milling your opponent's decks. This seems like a really, really sweet payoff. We gotta see this. I promise we're gonna play Magic, but we gotta see. We got a new rare here. Cranko's Buzz Crusher. I have not seen this card before. How bad is Cranko's Buzz? <gasps> Wait, is this land destruction? Cranko's Bugs Crusher. Five mana flying trample. It's a 4-4 four, four insect thopter. It's not legendary. When it ETBs, for each player, destroy up to one non-basic land that player controls. For each land destroyed this way, its controller may search your library for a basic land card. Put on the battlefield, tapped, and shuffle. Ooh. Ooh. Wait. Oh, it doesn't say target? When it enters the battlefield, for each player, destroy up to one. It doesn't, it doesn't target. Oh, <gasps> that means it does blow up Lotus Field. Oh, wow. I mean, on one hand, it's very sad that I get excited about four mana, four mana non-basic land destruction. But as far as land destruction in this era of magic, that's actually really good. Mm. And we have the Crucible of Worlds in standard. We got multiple Field of Ruins in standard. If only people would stop playing so many basics, we could actually build a, a really sweet land destruction deck. We're so close. We're so close. So chat. All right, let's talk about this deck and get into the game, and then I got another question for you. So we are starting off. We're playing some Timeless, of course, because Timeless is often, uh, is awesome. I saw this really cool deck floating around. I love Mono Black Devotion. I also love Necro. And someone posted a deck of Ashiok Wicked Manipulator in Necro. I don't know if you remember... We actually played a historic brawl deck that was kind of similar to this, built around Ashiok in Exile Effects, and it was really sweet. This is kind of the timeless version. So Necro, you can pay life, exile the top card of your library, and then you get it on your end step. Ashiok has an ability where if you pay life, and as long as you got cards in your library, you instead just exile a card from the top of your deck. So if we can get both of these on the battlefield, we can essentially draw our entire deck for free with Necropotids. I kinda, in chat, I don't know how bad of an idea this is. 
What do you think about adding Reliquary Tower to this deck? Is that just way too greedy when we already have these colorless lands? Can we afford to play Reliquary Tower in Timeless? Is there any way? Can you play Ponza in Standard when Murders of Carlo Manor comes out? It's on my list. I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best to build Standard Ponza. We'll see if it, we'll see if it works. <laughs> we need to teach the Marina Zoomers to play more basics. Karn Boo, yeah, I know. Karn, Karn is Boo, but it's timeless. Everyone's doing busted things, so we gotta do busted things too. What do you think of Living Conundrum? Seems like an against the odds card. Living Conundrum. Is that the the if you draw with a no if you draw with no cards, yeah. If you draw with no cards in your library. Living Conundrum. So Living Conundrum is like <clears throat> the fairest laboratory maniac of all time so if you would draw a card with none in your library instead you skip that draw and as long as there's no cards in your library it's a 10 10 flying vigilance hex proof so essentially wizards learn from their thassa's oracle mistake and the next version of laboratory maniac they made they actually made it so it has to live for two turns and be able to attack to actually be able to close out the game. Uh, it is a sweet against the odds card. It is the worst version of this effect uh, compared to Laboratory Maniac, Jace Wielder of Mysteries, uh, Thassa's Oracle, of course. But none of those cards are legal in standard. So, yes, I think we can build a deck around this uh, in standard for an against odds. It would be sweet. If you're playing an older format, I would probably I would probably just uh, play it in. Let's add a Reliquary Tower. I would probably just play one of the other options, but in but in standard, I think it'll be a fun against the odds card. Uh, hopefully you don't get too punished. So what's the idea of this deck? The idea of this deck is we play our Necro, we play Ashiok, we draw our entire deck, we win the Grey Merchants, we can kill things and gain tons of life with March of Wretched Sorrows. Uh, we have Ashiok for some reason to add Black Man. Like, graveyard decks are going to be in trouble. We have four Ashioks and made a Clay Line of the Voids to add mana for Nykthos by adding more Black Mana symbols. So let's, let's do some devotioning. Let's give it a go. I just noticed you're playing Paper and Sotomoto for Commander Clash this season. Do you think you will play your Invitational Guard? Ooh, hopefully. Yeah, what did you think of? What did you think of uh, Commander Clash for those that watched it? I'm very curious. Helpful Hunt, don't try to mulligan in turn one Necro. Most of the time, turn one Ashiok is best. Oh, yeah, I guess Dark Ritual Ashiok in a fetch land world was actually kind of hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks the Nazira cards all look like white cards? I feel like they could add subtle tints to the colors. I would attract visually as paper and vials. Yes, they do all look, they do all look kind of like white cards. I think the colors could have came through more. I still really like this style though. It's still, it's still one of the showcase styles I like. I like the live class. You guys seem to be more present in the game. Loved it, but can you play 40 again? Yeah, that's the biggest upside. So... <clears throat> the biggest change, the biggest change, uh, biggest reason for the change is like Moto just is not getting, is not getting all the cards anymore. Like this become, it used to be an annoyance that like, oh, some of the commander precon cards didn't make it or whatever, but now whole sets are not even making it. Um, so that was the biggest reason for the switch is just being able to have access to all the cards. I just want to see you strip mine in paper. Co oh, I always play strip mine. It's in all my decks, so it, it'll be coming. How do you get the cards for the episodes? Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the challenges. So one of the big challenges is getting all the cards and making sure that. So the risk with playing paper commander is it'd be very easy and you see it's very easy to be like oh i got this deck that i bring to magic cons i'll just play it for commander clash but the whole idea of commander clash is to be building around janky themes and i think that that has to continue right like that's one of the one of the big things we focused on is if we're gonna play well i guess it's ashiok time if we're going to play um if we're gonna play in paper the decks need to be the same we can't take in, we can't take and just start playing our magic Condex every week. Uh, so I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna be able to make it work, but it definitely takes more effort for sure. It is well made, but it also seems like a lot more work in terms of editing, harder to keep track of things and harder to understand the board states. If Mona was missing a lot of cards, it definitely a strike against it. Yeah, it's one of those things where I think there's, 
there's pluses and minuses to you both really wow are you demonic tutoring for a land that is not a great feeling but yes i think we are so demonic tutor we could just can we take a removal spell oh, we don't even have a removal spell demonic tutor for reliquary tower <laughs> reliquary tower <laughs> are we really doing that Maybe we just take, do we just take Nykthos? Nykthos is probably better. <laughs> oh, the classic commander. Demonic tutor for land that I really don't want to be getting anyway. Pass the turn. Yeah, I think Nykthos is the way to go. I'm not super familiar with Tabletop Simulator. Seth, is Paper Commander Clash for this season or is it permanent? Uh, it's definitely for this season. I think there's a good chance that it is permanent, but I mean, who knows for sure what the future holds, but assuming uh, people like it and we are able to uh, pull it off the way that we want to and the quality that we are aiming for, I think there's a, it's probably likely that it would be the, the norm going forward. Not that we'll never use Moto. I think there's, there's certain things that really work on Moto, right? Like Sliver Week or Chaos Week. Doing stuff like that in paper, really, really tough to keep track of everything. So I think Moto for Commander Clash probably still serves a, a purpose and it has a role to play. But I think that the default most likely would be, would be paper. Now, let's try to Bowmasters again. Okay, Resolves, ping ya. We're kind of just Ashiok Tribal at the moment, almost. Bowman gets to draw a card. Hmm, <laughs> ping ya. Okay. Oh, what do we do? How do we get countered here? Spell Pierce gets us? Well, go to combat, attack with bolts. See if our opponent taps down. About it, gonna take the beats. But if you have any, if you have any feedback, so feedback that I've heard, um, seeing hands, that's something that is definitely, that it's something that we're trying to figure out. So seeing hands, definitely have heard that feedback. There was also feedback from the first episode that like some of the sound effects were a little too loud. Things, some of the technical stuff like that. So we've definitely heard that. That stuff that's that stuff's very easy to uh, to to change. So that stuff we can change really easily. Stuff like how do we let people see our hands? That's a, a something that we want to have happen and we're working on, but that's going to be a little bit trickier to figure out. Loa Levar, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, well, I guess we just play a dirty Karn. Karn still gets spell pierced. To, well, no. Okay, one, two, three, four. Let's just play a dirty Karn. So play Karn. If our opponent has spell pierce, we can sack to Fraxian Tower. Okay, they do. So, sack the orc. Pay the two. Get the card. Play it around it. Take down card. What artifact wrecks our opponent the hardest? So, the card's gonna die. What do we take? What do we take? What do we take? Some of the card placement wasn't great, but appreciate having the pop-ups big enough to read. Is Neotuk... No, thank uh, thank goodness. No, no, no. Neotuk, Neotuk is... Uh, so he still helps with the editing, but Neotuk's kind of moved into a, into a role of doing more like back-end stuff and programming stuff. And we actually... We have a, a new member of the team, Morgan, who... Uh, is essentially just editing as his job full time. So Morgan is primarily responsible with help from everyone, but he's the he's the primary person responsible for Commander Clash and also also going to help with some other editing stuff. So no, poor Neotuk. Neotuk does so much, especially during spoiler season, but all the time Neotuk just keeps things running. We we wouldn't do that to him because it takes like it's almost like a full time job to edit Commander Clash the way the first episode was. Uh, to do it in paper and do all the editing. So it's it takes a lot of time. So there's no way Neotic could do it. We do need to take something here. Yeah, you know what? Hard to go wrong with the One Ring. Hard to go wrong with the One Ring. We'll just get the One Ring and pass. 
<laughs> What's the worst that could happen? To Stidions! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How about a top down camera for Commander Clash that lets us see your hand on the board at the same time? Yeah, so the only problem with seeing hands is so the way that we play the game is uh on spell table right so if we put our hand under the camera you would be able to see it but everyone else that was playing the game would also be able to see it so that's that's kind of the challenge to keep the the game running properly opponent flooded strength cannot be correct it's thanks to ashiok being gone another bow masters how many how many counters can our opponent possibly have Get in with the Bowmasters. Hit ya. Take up the Karn. Do we just jab the One Ring? They know it. They're going to counter it, right? They're definitely going to counter it. Well, okay. We can pay for the Spell Pierce. We can pay for the Spell Pierce. I really want to draw cards. One Ring. <clears throat> Did you see that? Oh, all right, opponent has a hard counter. We need to look at just, we need to look at just the uncommons from this set because the uncommons from this set are really good. And I will give wizards a ton of credit. We, we complain about wizards when they mess things up, but we gotta give wizards credit when they do things right. And one of the big things that they've done right recently is they have taken and, yeah, there's not that many control decks really in timeless i mean i think we'll be okay in this game things are just lining up well for our opponent we haven't been able to stuck a necro we've been off to a bit of a bit of a clunky start our nykthos isn't doing anything normally i think <clears throat> we can uh, overload counters pretty easily bonus fire bluff can nail well hmm uh, i guess we just one two three ashiok again all right, opponent appears to be out of counters. Get in, hit ya. Now, new 12 past the turn. Is Liquid Mill Torque and the client to run as a secondary coating, especially as a main deck ramp source? I don't believe Liquid Metal Torque is on Arena. Was opponent passing? Uh, all right, how about more Bowmasters? Ah, stern scolding. <clears throat> Ashiok? Oh, all right, Ashiok down, big Ashiok, okay. Well, let's, let's take it up and draw a card. Get a, ooh, we will, uh, we will exile the Dark Ritual. We will take the Gary. We'll go to combat. We will pass. I think we're actually going to take down this Ashiok and nuke the graveyard. They could be playing Treasure Cruise. They are playing Treasure Cruise. What about untap for Clash? Wait, untap? Oh, speaking of untap, I need to... Avert your eyes, chat. Avert your eyes. Actually, the desktop... It's got a lot of free space at the moment. Look at that. Pretty impressive, actually. <laughs> for being uh, for being spoiler season, this is a clean desktop. <laughs> we are actually doing it. Oh, that's another card. Wait, are we just... Is our opponent not doing anything? Oh, God. Okay, uh, take up Ashiok. Oh, this might just be game-ish. Uh, take the ley line of the... Exile the ley line of the void. Play the land. Uh... Play play a Karn? Do we have a counter for the Karn? Oh, they do. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, well, Ashiok, nuke your graveyard. Out of here, Ragavan. And I think we're going to go for it. Dark Ritual? You have... That's that's not just Ragavan, that's Ragavan uh the bling version. That's Did you notice? He's got the He's got the fat stack and the gangster necklace. That's uh that's blinged out Ragavan. 
<laughs> the expensive version. Great merchant. If they get bounce lands to Arena, do you think Splunky would be good enough to make Amulet Titan playable in Arena? Or is three mana too much and too slow? Yes. I think it I think it would. I mean, so it's not gonna be as fast as the modern version, but it doesn't need to be as fast as the modern version. So I think Oh, so I think it'd be fine. Okay. Okay, opponents. Blood Mooning, sure. Del Vigaru, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Target plays exiles the top X card of your library. Rex has a tonal mana value of cards you own in exile, which is not many. All right, well, dig up the Ashiok. Oh, 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 Macro. Wait, no! Why don't you pick the one that you, well, Ashiok. Look at the top two cards of your library, exile one and put the... Why do you pick the one that goes to exile? Isn't it way more intuitive to pick the one you want in your hand? <laughs> That's like, why word it that way? That's like the least intuitive wording. <laughs> mm, I, I, did a, I did a Bills. Wide right. Wide right. <laughs> oh, Pilawi, welcome to the fishbowl. All right, I, that's okay. We really wanted this Karn anyway. That was that was the TLDR. Did you notice our opponent put themselves to one blue mana? I don't even know if this was an especially good... I don't even know if this was an especially good Blood Moon for our opponent. Because they... <laughs> They're playing way too many dual lands to be playing main deck Blood Moon. Uh, well, we're going to kill this Ledger Shredder. And then we're going to attack you. And you're going to die. <laughs> uh, so what happened with the Bills? I don't even know. The same thing that always happens. I will say, it was, it was a good game. It was a good game. So I guess that's, like, encouraging that at least it was kind of a good game. But yes, uh, disappointing, disappointing loss. Okay, so we gotta remember with this Ashiok, click the card we don't want, not the card that we do want. What did, uh, what did y'all think of Ravnica Clue Edition? Where are the Clue Edition? I guess we got a sideboard. Actually, one thing I like about this deck is, <laughs> As much as I kind of hate Karn, I do enjoy playing Karn decks just because you don't really have to think about sideboarding. <laughs> it's kind of easy mode sideboarding because you're just like, yeah, it's, I can get it with Karn anyway. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> Lame cash grab. Forced Hasbro product. Candlestick is good equipment. Haven't paid any attention to Clue. I, I think... I think all those things might be true, technically. It does feel a little cash grabby to me, honestly. Like, it does feel like Hasbro was like, yeah, you better you better make this, Watsy. I I think those things are probably true. Actually, let's go down one one what? Ashiok's actually good. Actually, let's go down one Ashiok, that's fine. Seth, there's a client called untap.in. It gives you all the cards for free, but you only get 10 decks for free. $5 a month, you get access to unlimited number of deck slots. You can customize your decks in other things. Untap.in. I don't even know what untap.in does. Wait, it gives you all the cards. It gives you all the cards where? Is it like a client that you play on? Oh, well, we have a Leyline of the Void and a Necro and a bunch of dirty cards. I feel like the Clue Edition, it does have some cool cards. I will give it, I will give it credit for that. Like, the new Lannis is a cool card. So at least there's a few cool designs. But it overall feels pretty jumpstarty to me. Like just reading through like the mana values of the cards and like the power of the cards, it kind of feels jumpstart power level. And jumpstart's great. Jumpstart is. Wow, are we just going for it? Are we are we going to get spell pierced? How how afraid should we be, chat? I would really like to play this necro turn 1. But should we play scared? <laughs> like for scared retweet for play necro, no fear. <laughs> 
Go for it? All right, we'll go for it. Dark Ritual. Don't crack that fetch land opponent. Don't do it. Don't do it. We just want to... We just want to necro you a tiny bit. Oh, no! They have the spell fears. Tisk tisk tisk. Two for one ourselves. Oh, boom it. Does Necro see much playing commander? The only Oh my god, they stole a Necro off the top of our deck. Oh, now we're getting hit by the monkey. Oh, this is not good. The only reason that Necro doesn't see more play in commander. Yeah, we're in trouble this game. We're getting monkey snowballed. The only uh the only reason it doesn't see more play is it has the reputation of being too strong for casual commander. So there's people who refuse to play it, even though it's good in basically any deck that can cast it, uh, just because it's considered too spiky or too strong. But it is ridiculously powerful. Is that a Bowmaster they stole from our deck? Oh, this is going... Ah, oh, monkey. Oh, this is... <laughs> Wow, when this deck runs bad, it runs really bad, doesn't it? We really need the turn one Necro. Now our opponent's just gonna Ragavan us to death. Yeah, I actually think Dark Ritual probably needs to be restricted in Timeless. Yeah, opponents, uh, they're going off. The monkey is going off this game. I actually took Necro out of my mono black deck. I have Ulamog and Coffers and Grave Pact. Those are all pretty strong cards. Oh, what do you think about Eldrazi in Commander? Eldrazi, for some reason Eldrazi, if I was voting in the salt tier list or whatever, I think Eldrazi would be pretty high up. Well, I mean, we tried the Dark Ritual Necro thing and now we're dead? <laughs> eh, sometimes you don't cast anything. Do you play Eldrazi? When I first started playing Commander, Eldrazi, I would just like, oh, it's like a big creature. I'm playing Commander. I'll just, I'll just dump it in, I'll just dump it into the, into my deck. But now I hardly ever play Eldrazi. I feel bad annihilating one person. I think that's the, that's the issue I end up having with Eldrazi. Well, if we have the turn one hand now, our opponent won't be able to counter because we're on the play. Seth, so there's no such thing as too spiky or strong. People play what they own and what they want to spend money on. Necro is way cheaper than one ring, arguably better, and yet you probably see more one rings. Maybe. Oh. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try this. So we don't have net. Oh, are we gonna regret this? Are we gonna regret keeping this hand? So we can turn one. We can turn one Ashiok to shut down fetch lands. Is that good enough? All right, we're gonna we're gonna try it. I mean, we also get double ley lines, which is nice. Hopefully, our opponent's mulliganing into a handful of fetch lands. They're trying to blood man us, uh, blood moon us. We're trying to <laughs> Ashiok them. Oh uh, yeah, we'll start with two ley lines, and then swamp, and then dark ritual, and then Ashiok. Okay. Show us that fetch land. Show us that fetch land. Show us that fetch land. Oh, that's not a fetch land. And that's another silly. And that's another silly ley line. The worst thing we could draw. Opponent. Unholy. Not a fetch land. Karn that we can't cast past the turn. Sand could really use a Nykthos. Opponent, Unholy Heats. It's the Ashiok. Down to one. Expressive iteration. Oh, I don't think we can... I don't think milling them for four is that relevant here. Opponent, card, and... Oh, we gotta draw land. We gotta draw Nykthos. If we draw Nykthos, his hand pops off. Opponent finds another non-fetch land. Well, okay. We gotta try it. Now our opponent has gotten to a position where they're actually gonna be able to leave mana up and counter our Karn. <laughs> yeah, we wanna keep the Ashiak alive and make them spend spend cards to try to kill it if they wanna crack fetch lands. 
about it. Flooded Strand passes. Grary that we're never gonna cast, apparently, past the turn. Consider. Was this even a hand worth keeping? I'm honestly not sure. Like, is turn one Ashiok even good in this matchup? I'm not sure that's even good. <laughs> like, our opponent's playing a lot of ba uh, non-basics, or non-fetch land, uh, apparently. Yeah, at least we're not getting beat down by a Raghavan. If they had a Raghavan here, we'd just be straight up dead. And there's Ledger Shredder. And Lightning Bolt, and Connives. Nykthos! We need the Nykthos, and we need it soon. Well, okay. Fatal push. Do they really have another spell pierce? Holy spell pierces. Wow! Oh, Pony gets in for one. Tap land. March of Ratchet Sorrows. How are we still on two lands? Opponent. Combat. Hits us for what? Can we draw a Nekthos before our opponent finds uh, a Nykthos before our opponent finds a Blood Moon is the question. No, we cannot. <laughs> Magic gods, come on now. Come on now. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, we found the Nykthos, but our opponent found the Blood Moon first. <laughs> if we could have found that one turn earlier, we would have at least be playing things. Now we're like a million miles away from doing anything. Mountain. So many mountains past the turn. Bonet. Island. Combat. It's us. I mean, they're only hitting us for one, so we're still oddly in this game. Gray Merchant. Did you find a hard counter? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here you go, Bonet. Show us the Ragavan off the top. All right. No Ragavan. Bonet. Arena is mocking us this game. It really is. Gray Merchant. No way. No. Ranger man, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for stop top decking counters, opponent. I please expressive iteration to find a Ragavan or more counters. <laughs> oh yeah, we're out of things to put them to the test though, and they're drawing cards now. Like, how are we gonna put them to the test now? Leyline of the void. Uh, now they're gonna grow the ledger shredder. Yeah, this is actually like. Slipping away because our opponent has just managed to draw so many counters. And the timing of the Blood Moon was really bad. Alright, opponent, looting. Away, a consider. And they found the Ragavan. And they steal a Dark Ritual. Alright, well, we have officially run our opponent out of cards. I'm not sure it matters, though. I guess we'll see. Gary, number three, is a good draw. We'll play the Gary. Our opponent can't counter it. Drops to 13. It can block the Ragavan. Opponent. Come on. Come on, opponent. Ragavan dashes. Gets blocked. What, they top deck a bolt? All right, top deck and unholy heat. Connives, connives. Loses the Ragavan. Necro can't actually cast it. Now let's pass the. How do we do this? Opponents at thirteen. Ooh. Friday nights, I saw something about that on Twitter. That's actually, that's super cool. It's been a long time since they've done Friday nights, right? Huh. 
The question is, do we need to like pitch our hand to kill a ledger shredder? We can take Numa Mac a Gary, or I guess a Karn. I think we do this. I think we exile the ley line. Kill the bigger ledger shredder. Go up to 18 past the turn. Bonnet gets in for two. Swamp. Necro. Oh, that's a necro. That's a necro on the battlefield. And that is cards being drawn. One, two, three, four. How far do we go without dying? Five. So what's the nightmare? They lightning bolt dash Ragavan. Hit us for five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Okay. We'll go to here. We'll go to here. Be good, Necro. Be good, Necro. We need some goodies here. Dark Rit. Bowmaster. March. Okay, March is good. March is good. March is good. And an Ashiok. So next turn we can draw our deck. Hold. Hold. The question's gonna be what counters does our opponent have? If any. Opponent hits us. Passes. Well, we will. Okay, we're going for it. Uh, oh, how do we do it? How do we do this? How do we do this in... All right, we play the Swamp. That's first. We do need to kill the Ledger Shredder. We also need to be able to play around... Yeah, the Counter Spells. We also don't want to trigger the Ledger Shredder unnecessarily. Okay, Dark Ritual, that felt pretty clear. Uh, Ashiok? Does our opponent connive into a counter? Discards a land. Wow. They did connive into a counter. Well, uh, let's see. One. <clears throat> so let's go X5. Exile one of these. Actually, no. Let's go X4. Exile a Bowmaster. Kill the Ledger Shredder. Go back up to 11. They kill our Ashiok, but that's okay. We get to Necro again to refill our hand. Sooner or later... Sooner or later, they're going to run out of counters because they are not drawing a new hand every turn, and we are. Uh, one more. One more. Down to four. Just outside of Bolt Rage. Pass the turn. New hand drawn. Swamp. Hive. Mountain. Mountain. Ashiok. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, those were... Oh, those are really bad draws. Oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> that was not that was not a good necro. And it's the stupid monkey. Their top deck is the stupid monkey. Opponent attacks. They're going to hit Gary. They're going to hit Gary and we're going to die. Oh, okay. It's a Nykthos. Ragavan goes away. Uh, but we're at two. So we're kind of getting locked. We're kind of getting locked out of this game. Play a swamp. One, two, three. One, two. Hmm. We really need this take Numa. We need the take Numa. So I think we just have to pass. We just have to pass. Come on. Please don't top deck a counter. If they top deck another counter, we die. Ragavan. 
Well, if this is stern scolding, I'm gonna I'm gonna cry after all this. Bowmaster. <laughs> wow. How is it possible? How is it possible? Oh, that's not nice. This ruined our game opponent. Oh. The problem is we can't draw cards anymore. The problem is we can't draw cards. And without being able to draw cards, I don't know how we can realistically win. Mill you. Play the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. I mean, we might as well draw a card. Our last card of the game. It would be so sweet if that was a gray merchant. We needed the we needed the channel. The hives a mountain. <laughs> the blood moon. All of our sweet lands are mountains. How many Ragavans are left? One Ragavan, two Ragavan. Oh, there's a lot of lightning bolts. I don't think we can really play around it. We got it. How many cards are in the deck? 24. 4, 8, 12, 16. Okay, we'll leave the token back. We'll leave the token back this turn. Hit you with the Bowmasters. Come on, Necro. <laughs> Leyline. Leyline in the void. Bonnet passes. Well, okay. Ashiok, Milia. Do we hit anything good? No. Full send. Down to 10. Play the swamp. Opponent. Passing. Ashiok, Milia. Can we hit some bolts and some Ragavans, please? All right, there's a Ragavan, not a bolt, though. They're going to draw the bolts. They're going to draw the bolts, and there's nothing we can do. <laughs> what a ridiculous game this has been. I mean, even if we lose... This was a ridiculous, a ridiculous game. Timeless is a pretty great format. Here they come, hit ya. Down to eight, about it. Untaps, 13 cards left. <laughs> okay, not dead yet. Oh, they find an unholy heat for the Ashiok. Wait, so this means we literally have to win with this Bowmaster? I don't think that's possible. We need our opponent to whip for three turns straight. Pound it draws. Mountain. Any creature beats us because we ah oh, we can't draw cards. Opponent drew something. Are they gonna treasure cruise for all their mana? What? This is the craziest thing I've ever seen anyone do. Seriously? You're just hoping to hit the bolt? You're hoping to hit the bolt? Opponents all in on this one draw. They're at three. Treasure cruising into the Bowmaster. Did it pay off? Did it pay off? What a ridiculously risky play. Darkwing Duck, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. About it. Did you find it? Did? You? Hopefully it's a handful of counters. Now you can draw all your stern scoldings, opponent. I feel like they drew lethal and we're, they're going to do it right at the end of the clock. Molten Impact to kill the token. No, they drew they drew the win the whole time. They just were <laughs> slow rolling it. Oh, wow. Well, that was an epic game. Oh. Our opponent top deck so perfectly that game. Mm. That was a very crazy, at least it was a crazy entertaining game. Like, that's, if you're going to lose, lose in a crazy entertaining way. 
Oh, I can't believe, like, every time they need to top deck, they top decked, they top decked the, the perfect card. Wouldn't they mail out first? Yeah, but they're gonna, they're gonna kill us before they, before we mail out. Like, we needed them not, because we can't draw cards for the rest of the game. So once our opponent uh, stabilizes for that single Bowmaster, we just can't really do anything. So is there anything in Clue Edition that's worth, like, is it worth buying Clue Edition? That's the, that is the question. Is it worth buying? Urborg Lorgoy handing out a bunch of gifts up to Drake and Free Mind, Bizana, Leons to Recycle Toad. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big Super Jeffrey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's what really got us, is when we drew down to four with Necro and went like, land, 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 ley line, land, land, or something. Like, that was a, that was a pretty, pretty big low roll. That was a pretty big low roll. So, so is it fair to think of Clue Edition as Jumpstart rebranded, just on the power level of the cards? So, like a pack, a pack of Gary White, four mana, three four Vigilance. When you attack, create a food token for each player being attacked. Pay one white, tap it, tap X food tokens, create X one one white human creature tokens. That's fine, right? That's not like. That's not, like, absurd, but it's, like, a fine commander. Speaking of commanders, Commander Mustard, 5 mana, 5, 5, Vigilance. Other soldiers you control have Vigilance, Trample, Haste. Pay 4 until end of turn. Soldiers you control gain. Whenever this creature attacks, it deals 1 damage to defending players. Like, a weird Hellrider effect. Hmm. I just wish it was cheaper. I wish it was cheaper. I think this would be, a actually, a really good product at, like, at the price of like a fat pack like bundle prices if it was like 40 bucks it would probably be a pretty cool like play it a couple times it's a unique experience you get some cool cards the 70 dollar price tag it just scares me away i think that that just scares me that just scares me away i will say and we started talking about this earlier so uh shout out to wizards for the power of the uncommons they've been making i think this set once again we we're already talking about flotsam and jetsam uh but this set has a bunch of really good uncommons again like insidious roots kind of an insane uncommon right uh two mana creature tokens you control become birds of paradises and then and whenever a creature leaves a graveyard you make a zero one plant and then put a counter on each plant you control that's an uncommon like if they had made this a mythic if they had made this a rare no one would have questioned it and I think they could have probably got away with almost making it a mythic, <laughs> but it's an uncommon. It's an uncommon. Your creatures all, your creature tokens all tap for mana. When a creature leaves a graveyard, make a plant, put counters on each plant you control. That's so much text and power for two mana on an uncommon. Even like uh, call a surprise witness, just two mana, reanimate a creature mana value three or less, put a flying counter on it. That's a fine uncommon, not like a broken uncommon, but that's a fine uncommon. But I think across the board, the power Power level of uncommons, increasing that is one of the best things Wizards on. Even like Living Conundrum, like just the complexity of this card, having the uh, the Lab Man don't die to milling out tax, and all this additional tax hexproof. Even that's like very complicated. Or some of these cases, there's so much tax. I actually kind of like uh, Case of the Shattered Pact. So definitely a big shout out to Wizards for uh, for improving the uncommons. As we're talking about. <laughs> I gotta ask you about one more card. I know we're gonna play more magic. We're gonna play more magic, I promise. So chat, yesterday there's a little spoiler. A little spoiler, uh, if I can find it. Uh, here we go. A little spoiler called Leyline of the Guild Pact. What do we do with Leyline of the Guild Pact? So Leyline of the Guild Pact, if you hadn't, if you haven't seen it yet, Leyline of the Guild Pact, it is. <laughs> Four hybrid green mana. So, Slesnia hybrid, Simic hybrid, Golgari hybrid, Gruul hybrid. And then you get to play it for free like any ley line if it's in your opening hand. Each non land permanent you control is all colors, and lands you control are all basic land types in addition to their other types. So my first thought, yeah, like scape shift stuff was my first thought, where you're like, so each, does this actually work with devotion? It wouldn't, right? Each non-land permanent you control is all colors, but it wouldn't actually change the pips for devotion. I don't believe. 
It's really good with Nick though. So like with Green Devotion, uh, this is four green mana symbols on turn zero essentially. So it seems good there. Coalition Victory, Happily Ever After. Those were some of the first places I went. Also like there's lands, Amiria, Valica, those style of lands that care about having certain land types on the battlefield. That actually seems pretty funny. Like having Valica and also uh, having Valica and also um, Amiria going off in the same deck seems kind of hilarious. Plus, you could do like, do you remember the 1994 like Inquest Magazine combo, which was like take Slight of Mine, the card that's like one mana, change a color word on a card to turn your Bad Moon into an anthem for any color. You can do that kind of stuff, right? Like your Bad Moon, which pumps black creatures plus one plus one, it's gonna pump all your creatures because they're all colors. Your Tor brand is adding damage to all your stuff because they're all red creatures. I feel like this is going to lead to some of the coolest but most disastrous decks of all time like because the way to build around this card fully is going to be a deck that if you don't have this card it is going to be the worst deck ever made like it's not even going to function a little bit but when you have Leyline of the guild pack it's going to be so hilarious so it seems like it seems like a, a perfect against the odds card very good against the odds card Frexian Omneth Ooh, Frexian Omneth is a cool idea but I don't even know if that works wait Frexian Omneth Let's look up Omnath really quick. Because one, so just so it's clear about this card, one of the things that's awkward about it is it only changes the colors of non land permanents you control. So there's a bunch of cards that are like, when you cast a multicolor spell, do this or whatever. It's not going to work with those because this is only going to change the color of permanents literally on the battlefield. Even if you have the permanent in your hand and then you cast it, it still isn't going to become all colors until it's on the battlefield. So Omnath, uh, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, look at the top card of your library. You may feel like card phase, three or more colored mana symbols. Yeah, Omnath falls into that same problem, right? Where, yeah, because this only works with permanents you control. What was the other one? Jared... Carthalion True Hair? I think this was no. I don't know. There's some there's some new legend from like Dominar United that's like whenever you cast a spell that's multicolored scry one, and when you cast one that's all colors, make a four four uh flying angel. My for I thought at first, oh, it's gonna be so good in that deck. But yeah, the, the shenanigans don't actually work. What was the what was the other one someone just asked about? Oh, the blue mythic. Okay. Yeah, well, oh boy, I could spend all day talking about this set. Um, the Blue Mythic, where's the where's the Sphinx? Conspiracy Unraveler. How good is this card? How good is this card, chat? So Conspiracy Unraveler. Seven mana for a 6-6 six, six flying Sphinx detective. Does it have the hat, though? Where's the... Where's the detective hat? Isn't it supposed to have the detective hat? I don't see the hat. Watsy. Watsy. <laughs> So, seven mana, six, six flying Sphinx Detective. You may collect evidence 10 rather than pay the mana cost for spells that you cast. So, it's a Sphinx that is essentially almost like an omniscience if your graveyard is full enough. I feel like, uh, I feel like this card is probably, <laughs> it's, it's probably worse than a lot of people think, but also better than a lot of people think. I, I, if a card could somehow, at the same time, be very underrated and very overrated, it's probably this card. So I think people are going to think of this as like, oh, it's omniscience. You got to have a lot of mana value and stuff in the graveyard. But I also think it's very possible to build a deck that can put a lot of mana value in the graveyard. Sure, you might not fully omniscience where you can cast your entire deck, but I think you can cast enough to win the game. So the first thing I thought of is chaining together ultimatums. So you like inspiring ultimatum, draw five cards, deal five damage, gain five life. It's seven mana. That's going to be seven mana value in the graveyard. Then you can exile that in three more mana value to cast another ultimatum from the cards that you just draw like a cruel ultimatum and draw some more cards get another big spell in the graveyard so i think there's some possibility of like chaining together big spells in a pretty epic turn reanimating it's the way to go if you think about reanimation reanimation decks are filling the graveyard anyway that's kind of the that's kind of the gimmick there's got to be a better way for me to display this card where <laughs> where you can see the entire card but not have it be so small how do we is there not is there no in between Hey, look at that. 
professional streamer. We did it. Hey, you can see the whole thing in the art. Uh, so I think this card, yeah, I think the card is 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 going to have purposes. There's uses for this card. What about in Commander? Can you just jam this in any Commander deck? I feel like no, right? You still got to be like the big spell deck, a self mill deck. But if you but if you actually can build around this, the effect is very very strong. What is your pick chat for strongest card in the set so far? What is just number one? What's your number one strongest card favorite card? What would your what would your pick be? Just number one overall from this uh, from this Archer with Charm. That is probably my pick. Archer with Charm is wild. That card is so good. Leyline is the strongest, really. So Leyline, I think, is one of the most interesting, but I actually think it's probably mostly a jank card. Mole God, I think, is actually really good. Crime. Oh, is that the Crime Novelist? Yeah, it goes infinite with literally everything card. Hey, what's up, Albert? How are you? New Judas seems super fun. Judith might be one of the best, one of the best commanders from the set. I'm still a little skeptical it makes it in 60 card formats. I do like the, the one mana wrath combo, like this and end the festivities at six mana to just wrath your opponent's board. Slime, oh, slime, we haven't talked about slime. Slime against humanity. The $4 common. So slime against humanity, three mana, sorcery. Make a zero zero ooze creature token. Put X plus with plus with counters on it. Where X is two plus the total number of cards you own in exile and in your graveyard that are oozes and or named slimes against humanity. And you play any number of them in your deck. So we have seen four cards, I believe in the past. Relentless rats, rat colony, dragon's approach, persistent petitioners that let you play any number of cards in your deck. So far, every single one of them have been meme cards. They're super fun and people like building around them and we play them on against odds and people build commander decks out of them. Is Slime Against Humanity the exception? Could this be the first time that we actually have a playable, you can play any number of these in your deck? Oh, Shadowborn, five, you're right. Yeah, there's five, there's five. Yep, 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 you're right. Good call, good call, chat. I did miss one. But could this be the first playable one? So the first one is a three mana two, two. The next one is a three mana three, three. Three mana four, four, five, five. It's close, right? It's close. Obviously, you can do the the ripple shenanigans uh, where you can combo off and just like have a ridiculous turn. I do think it'll be kind of funny to build like a commander deck that's uh, uh, I'm probably going to build this deck. I got it. Let me see the deck someone put in chat. Maybe it's the same. It might be the same idea. Oh, that's not the idea I had at all. Okay. Wart the Raid Mother. I mean, that makes sense. My idea was was just build uh, like 60, 60 Slime Against Humanities. Ave is the commander. And then uh, Thrumming Stone, of course. Maybe with a couple of ways to tutor up the, the Thrumming Stone. But Thrumming Stone, oh, I'm so happy this card got reprinted. It was not that long ago that Thrumming Stone was like $40. And every time I wanted to build a cool budget deck with Thrumming Stone, I just couldn't because Thrumming Stone itself was too expensive. But now it's $2. Uh, unfortunately, Slime Against Humanity is super expensive. But couldn't that be a deck like Ave Progenitor Ooze, Thrumming Stone, 60 Slime Against Humanities, just YOLO it. <laughs> Can y'all do a Commander Clash episode where the decks are built around cards that you can have any number of? Ooh, I actually, I actually really like that idea. I'm gonna say yes. I'll, I'll have to sell the rest of the crew on it. But now that we got Slimes Against Humanity, we can do like Slime Against Humanity versus Dragon's Approach versus Persistent Petitioners versus whatever one of the black ones. That would actually be pretty good. You need surgical, I've seen, yeah, I saw someone mention surgical extraction, using that to exile. So get one in the graveyard, exile it, and then you cast one and make like a, whatever, 60, 60 or something. Falco Spara is the real MVP of the oozes. Is it? Let me, let me read Falco Spara. I forgot this card existed. Four mana, three, three, ETBs, leave the top of your library and cast spells from the top of your library by removing a counter. Ooh. Oh, that actually works incredibly well with uh, with oozes, doesn't it? Oh, if you have a way to get the extra lands out of the top of your deck, you could do some serious work with that. 
Double <laughs> Double Dark Ritual Tap Land. So this hand can what? Rituals plus two plus two. We could turn to Karn. Do we keep you know what? I think we mulligan this. Well, okay. We have all the mana in the world. Nothing to do with it. We got a reliquary tower, though. <laughs> Would you have kept that first hand? Maybe I should have kept the first hand. We're going to keep our reliquary tower hand. If we had a, if we had an untap land, it would have been a little more appealing. The fact that our, our first land comes into play tapped makes it kind of kind of brutal. This isn't bad, though. Okay, so now that we drew this Demonic Tutor... We can Demonic Tutor and then... Reliquary Tower Necro? Off Dark Ritual next turn? <laughs> I really want to... I really want a Necro with a Reliquary Tower out. What is our opponent doing at instant speed? Oh, Generous Ent... Oh, is this the Mono Green Primeval Titan deck? Eh, that deck I don't think is very good. It might be our deck, though. Hey, chat, is Clue Edition an actual board game? I can play with friends that is a bit into magic. So, Sir Robert, have you ever played Jumpstart? The closest comparison, I think, to Clue Edition is Jumpstart in magic with a little bit of Clue mixed in, with Clue characters and so forth. Ugh, Okay. Abriel Grazer into a Sunken Citadel. Well, we're going to play a Reliquary Tower, Demonic Tutor. Grab our Necro. Grab the Necro. Ship the turn. How good is collecting evidence with aftermath cards? Split cards are some of the best cards for collecting evidence, right? Because they're adding twice as much. They're adding twice as much mana value since both sides count. So I think that's one of the best ways to uh, to power it up. Oh, dear. So this natural or primeval titan? Yep. Okay, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be really interesting. Can we... <laughs> can we beat this? Clue Edition really should have been booster pack. Sell one core pack, 10 or 12 bucks, and if Clue boosters for jumpstart pack prices. My concern... Yeah, my biggest concern with this, I'm not sure how the replayability works. Hey, what's up, Great Destroyer? How are you? That's my biggest concern, is I'm not sure how the replayability works... Uh, because you're getting jumpstart packs, I guess you can put them back together or something. But that's that's my biggest worry is I think it's going to be trickier for it to be a real board game than I thought at first. Because I was thinking it was going to be a, a magic board game, but I don't think it's exactly that. Okay, so how do we do this? We play take Numa because we need black mana. We activate Necro... Probably 19 times. I think we go the whole way. So 19 Necro activations. At the end of our turn. Or I guess we don't even have to do it at the end of our turn. We do it whenever. But we can pitch a bunch of cards to March to kill the Titan and gain back a bunch of life. Reliquary Tower is going to actually do its thing. The man Josh Harris... Do you own the, the Philadelphia 76ers? Welcome to the visual. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Down to three, down to two, down to one. All right. I'm sure this will go fine. <laughs> just do a just do a little just a little bit of necroing. Song and Citadel. Swamp. Wait, no. We can't possibly draw lands this time, right? Land. Necro. Swamp. Dark Rit, Dark Rit, Bowmasters, Karn, Swamp, Tower, Leyline, Ashiok, Swamp, Nekthos, Ashiok. Ashiok just wrecks this deck, doesn't it? All right, so last Necro card. 
So now we get to Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Orcish Bowmasters. Pangya. Orcish Bowmasters. Pangya. March of Wretched. So how much can we exile? One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's go X7. One, two, three, four, five, six. And kill the prime time. So that was a cute turn. That was a pretty cute little turn, I will say. Back up to eight. Hand is super full. The gentlemen, welcome to the fishbowl. Not again. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, this might be an issue. This might be an issue. Well, I guess we just gotta do it again. <laughs> We're gonna draw we're gonna draw our deck this game. Can we beat a field of the dead though? We need some Garys. We need some Garys. Uh, hey Seth, what's going on? What's the uh what time is it there? It is 3 30 almost in the afternoon. My right, opponent does primeval titan stuff. Passes. Okay, so how do we do it this time? We play Nykthos. We play Nykthos. We make five mana. We play Ashiok. I think. We play Ashiok. Welcome to and now we go back to Necroing. Back down to one. We should stop hitting lands. Okay, down to one again. Pass the turn. No attacks. Get a million Necro cards. We just want black cards. We just want black cards. Okay, Necro's a black card. Karn is not. Swamp is not. Swamp is not. Gary is, but we don't really want to use it. Leyline is. Ashiok. Okay, so March of Wretched Sorrows. For six. Exile, exile, exile. We have drawn so many lands. Is this deck just playing too many lands? Kill the Primeval Titan. Gain some life. Pass the turn. <laughs> yeah, I should have used Citadel for the activation. It's outdated, but if you get an idea of my Shadowborn deck, well, let me see Unshaven Drake. So what card? Uh, <clears throat> what cards are you almost excited to uh, build around? Yeah, Shadowborn's interesting. The upside of Shadowborn being able to tutor up demons, it's a big upside compared to uh, some of the other you can play any number of cards. All right, Cami, Conjuring, making a zombie. Opponent. Well, we'll block a dork. Somehow we still only have one Nykthos, too. So strange. So strange, this draw. Ashak's very good against Primeval Titan, though. Atrada is super cool. Delaney. Oh, that might be the best Panharmonicon yet. It might literally be the best Panharmonicon they've printed so far. That card's so good. Oh. That's awkward. Well, we do have another Nick, though. So way down here. So I guess this is fine. We grab a Swamp. 
I'm glad they didn't hit our reliquary tower. That would have made me sad. Uh, so play Nykthos number two. Nykthos mana. Gray Merchant. Gain back a little bit of life. Ah, uh, go back to Necroin. <laughs> We're going to draw literally our entire deck. Oh, I should have used... I should have used Citadel again. You're right. <laughs> You're right, chat. You're right. You're right. I will accept the puns. The newest preview is a rare creature of non-targeted land removal. Yeah, that card's, that card's really good. It pains me to be excited for... For uh, non-basic land removal, but in 2024, I'm not above. I'm not above getting hyped about that card. Okay, is that enough? How far do we actually go? We still have more marches, right? What if we whiff on a march? Do we die? Let's go to five. That's good. That's good enough. That's good enough. All right, let's draw a few cards. No attacks. No attacks. Nig Necro. Necro is a messed up card. Draw eleven. Ashiok. Gary. Leyline. Ashiok. Karn. Swamp. Meatball. Ashiok. Leyline. Well, there's all of our good cards. So that we didn't actually. We didn't hit a march. Is it possible we die here? Oh, it shouldn't be possible. It shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, Sunken Citadel. Sunken Citadel, we should be manually tapping to activate Nykthos. It taps for two for land activated abilities. Pound it, gonna take up to two. So then kill the Bowmasters. I mean, as long as we survive, though, we should be good. Field of the Dead makes a zombie. With double nick those, next turn we just play everything. The opponent's gonna seek. I don't know what non lands they're seeking that's gonna scare us. It's gotta be all primeval titans and ramp spells. We should be okay. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. What do you think about the idea that this set should have been a should have been on Capenna? Oh boy. All right, fun is going to be had. So, uh, let's make a little Nykthos mana. Let's play a... Actually, no, we're doing this wrong. We're doing this wrong. We're not going to pun again. We're not going to pun again. I don't want to get yelled at. So, we're going to play a Meat Hook Massacre. We're good. We're good. I got it, Chad. I got it. I got Even before the yelling, I got it. I just had to make sure you were paying attention. I thought, I thought you might have been falling asleep over there. <laughs> I had to make sure you were still paying attention. So then, so get down the meat hook. Now we can tap two, activate Nykthos for 11. <laughs> or I guess instead we could just, we could also just tap the Citadel and activate Nykthos for 11. That also works. <laughs> That's also that's also a possibility. Uh, so make some Nykthos mana. Play an Ashiok. <laughs> would I would I troll you, chat? Would I would I actually do that to you? <laughs> would would I actually do that? Oh, uh, chat! How many of you are? Uh, how many of you are going to be going to uh, to Chicago to the Magic Con? Are any of you going to be there? All right, new Nick, those make a little more mana, and this is where hopefully the game ends, right? So we get to play a Gary opponent. Going to do some cracking. Does this keep our opponent alive? No. I don't believe so. I'll be there. How can I get in a game with you? Uh, just find me. I I will mostly just be hanging out playing uh, 
playing games all weekend. So uh, if you just catch me when I'm not in a game, come up and uh, we'll get in a game. I'd love to. I mean, Kamigawa could have been more interesting than Kempenna. Kempenna just feels like, ah, the detective place, right? The, the flavor of it feels so perfect for it being like, a detective, a detective story. Did you see the Mark Rosewater thing? This was actually kind of interesting. Lost in the shuffle of spoiler season. Let me see if I can look this up. There was a, there was an interesting question to Mark Rosewater about, about New Capenna. So apparently someone asked Mark, Mark Rosewater, why, uh, why was this set set on Ravnica instead of New Capenna? And the answer was there was no law enforcement on New Capenna. So the follow-up obviously, or that was one of the answers. Also, there's just not the iconic characters like Ravnica. So the follow-up was why didn't New Capenna have, uh, have law enforcement? And, uh, uh, the answer, in not so many words, was it basically like current events threw us some curveballs when we were designing it. So it sounds like the idea was it would have had law enforcement, but they ended up taking it out at the last minute. So in a roundabout way, that last minute change might be the reason that Murders is set on Ravnica rather than in Capenna, because it's hard to do the the detective thing without having a, some sort of some sort of law enforcement involved. I thought that was an interesting, an interesting uh, explanation. Do we want to sideboard in anything? This, we really just want to stick the Ashiok. Let's let's run it back. Let's run it back. People jump to New Capenna because it's crime theme. Kamigawa also provides large cities, more modern technology, uh, contained investigations, more well-known characters, and lingering hooks due to invasion. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think it needs to be. I think it needs to have iconic characters. I think that's part of like. I think that's part of uh, part of what can make this set work. So I can see why they went that direction, because I think without having the iconic characters that people know, hey, CG Fucold, uh, the set would have a lot harder time. Uh, wow, Punish is going to scoop. I think it would have a lot harder time. Don't need cops in my fantasy. Yeah, that makes sense. Everyone hates on Capenna, but I loved it, and it had great mechanics. To me, Capenna just didn't feel like, uh, it didn't feel like all of what I was expecting. I was thinking, when they said, like, uh, how do they uh, film noir or whatever, like, the way they described it, I was thinking, like, 1940s, like, detective-style movie or something. That's that's how I was kind of had it in my head. And some of that came across with, like, the, the 1920s uh, Art Deco stuff. Like, it had some of that feel. But then the actual, like, story of the set didn't really didn't really hit on that as much as I was expecting. So I don't think uh, Capenna was bad. But I do think it, like... And it's probably because of whatever changes they made, but I feel like it didn't end up hitting like exactly what I was expecting when they announced it, if that makes sense. Yeah, like every card in this set makes a clue. <laughs> it is it is almost like excessive at this point. How many things just make a clue? What do you think? Here's something someone said the other day that I'm curious about. So if you look at yeah, this is fine. If you look at uh, Ravnica Murders, and if you really think about it, the big mechanics are Morph, slightly tweaked, Manifest, slightly tweaked, uh, and even Delve, maybe a little bit more than slightly tweaked. But these are like new versions of pretty old-time well-known mechanics. And I saw someone say, oh, see, Watsy's so lazy. They're running out of ideas. I had never really thought of that. I hadn't really thought of that. Does it come across that way to you? Like when you see a cloak in disguise being pretty much morph with a little bit of a upgrade for 2024, is your first thought like, oh, look at Watsy taking the easy way out? Or I is it, I don't know. When I see it, I kind of see the evolution, which is kind of cool. Like uh, it's a mechanic that was really popular 
a decade ago or two decades ago, but it doesn't stand up to 2024. Like you couldn't you imagine how bad literal morph would be. It would be stone unplayable. Like if they made literal morph, it would see z literally zero competitive play. And I'm not even being hyperbolic. The number would actually be zero because it would just die to cut down and play with fire. There's no way you can play a morph creature in 2023. It is just not, po or 2024, it's just not possible. So I kind of see it as a cool way to update, to update some of these popular mechanics from the past and do it in a way that makes them relevant again, where if you did actual like morph, it just wouldn't be relevant in anymore with the power level of the game. So I don't know, I like it. I can see where someone would come from. They're like, oh, I've seen all these mechanics before or whatever. Like this is a, a sequel or rather than a, a new set or whatever. I can see where someone could come from that perspective. But to me, it didn't really come across that way. I think making more nuanced spins on existing mechanics is interesting. Yeah, I kind of like it, dude. There's only so much design space. Yeah, I I wonder if that's ever going to be a real problem. Do you think it'll ever, ever be a real issue? Like, could Magic actually just straight up run out of design space? Is that a, is that a real possibility? Well, let's pass. Nykthos, almost good, not quite. Mishra's Bobble. I think we're just gonna try to Bowmaster here. We want to kill the Swift Spear, but it's tricky to kill with the March. I think we just Bowmaster, ping, block with the token. The most important card in our hand is definitely this March. Like, if we can use March to gain six life or something. Ooh, that's a painful way for that to die. If we can use March to gain like six life, it is likely to just win us the game. Ooh, are they killing the token? They are. All right. Well, opponent has done their thing. One, two, three, four. Do we just exile everything except Necro? <laughs> if we exile everything but Necro, how do we lose? I don't think we do. I mean, Necro's worth infinite cards anyway, so being alive to cast those cards would be sweet. Uh, March it, X6, tapped out. The opponent, gonna crack the bobble, take a peek, take a peek. March and say GG. I'm not Krim. Who do you think? Do you think I'm Krim? <laughs> Krim would be crowd surfing Karn <laughs> on, on that poor. Our opponent's just trying to play some budget mono red. <laughs> Krim, would be, Krim would be crowd surfing all over them. Uh, about it. Gimano faces Kakazan. Screw the critics. Down to 13. We do need a black source or a dark ritual. One or the other. I don't even, chat, how do you actually emo? I've never been, I've never been super clear on how you actually. One, two, activate. Yeah, we need more black mana symbols, pass the turn. Is there a way you can set up your emotes? Like if I wanted to crowd surf Karn on someone, how do I do that? Is that even possible? Bona adds us to 10. And passes. Well, we find another March. Go attacking. <laughs> March is so good in this matchup. Bona down to 13, gonna flip their saga. And. Well, I mean, I think you click here and do emotes, right? But there's gotta be, like, I don't have access to crowd surfing Karn. How do I, how do I crowd surf Karn? Yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll just kill this. Oh, you gotta set it up in your profile. Oh, all right, maybe, maybe we'll look at it. We have a new donation from Lucid, $3 donation. Do you have a paper copy of Peacekeeper? I do not currently. Ooh, searing blood. All right. I do not currently have a paper copy of Peacekeeper. Well, there goes the Bowmasters. We drop to six. We draw Necro, which is uncastable. We hit you down to 11 past the turn. 
Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Well, uh, so... One, two, three, four. Exile and Necro. Kill the Eidolon. Gain some life. Black Source. Black Source. Ashy. <laughs> This deck, when it runs good, it feels busted. When it doesn't run good, it can be so clunky. Like, now we're just so stuck on lands, we can't really do much of anything. Static Discharge, him to six. It's a land, but it doesn't even make black mana. I guess we can use the Sunken Citadel. Boom. Blow up that Ramadan Bruins. I think it just took us too long to hit our lands. Like, I, I don't even know if we play Necro now. Like, do we even play it? We're at six against Burn. We could use our opponent to draw a land. Our opponent drawing a land would be kind of sweet. Hey, Seth, if you could choose a card that would be new to Arena and was legal and timeless, what would it be? I kind of want Ren and Six or Grist. Ooh, Grist would be a good one. I don't think I actually... I don't think I actually want Ren in six. Maybe if you give me strip mine. I kinda want I kinda want strip mine. <laughs> I I wouldn't mind a strip mine action. Really though, Force of Will, Wasteland, those are two that I'd really like. As far as like Ooh, alright, well. Uh let's hash yuck. And take up Ashiok. Exile Ashiok. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. Phone it. Dragon Rage Shadow Alert. That doesn't kill us. We draw a Oh, does this let us do everything? If we one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so good. Take Numa. One, two, three. Necro. Looking a little sketchy at the moment. Not as sketchy as you think, though, because we have Ashiok, and we also have a Gary. So we get to play Gary. Now we have the full combo. We actually get to draw our entire deck if we want to. We will exile a Orcish Bowmasters. Take the Nick, though. So the trick is Ashiok Static means that we don't take any damage from Necroing. We just exile an extra card and don't get access to it. So now we're free to draw as much as we want. No Reliquary Tower this time, but we can refill our hand against Mono Red without taking damage and hopefully set up for uh, for the kill next turn with double Nick those. Oh, so good. So good. It also means that our opponent has to attack Ashiok or Ashiok's ultimate is going to be, going to be super lethal because we have... <laughs> enough mana value at exile that we can just mill our opponent's entire deck so that's the other upside of the combo not only does it let us draw and not take damage it also is a finisher that lets us win the game come on something good we'd really like one more march march would be the best well another gary's fine i bet we could play this deck without i bet we could play this deck without the without the cards actually and now we can feel good about winning with it. <laughs> oh, exclamation! Exclamation point deck should bring you to the to the deck list page. Hopefully, another DRC. Sure, 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 sure. What would you like to see reprinted into into timeless? Opponent. I would also like to see, you know what would be really cool? Is to see more modern cards that have, wait, our opponent just gonna let us win? How many cards in exile? 42, 38, yeah, all right. Uh, target player exiles, top X cards of the library, where access total mana uh, value of cards you own in exile. Let's do that. <laughs> yes. How are you gonna win without a, Without having a hand opponent, or without having a deck. <laughs> the double kill. We exiled your deck and burned him out. <laughs> Ashiok is so sweet. I want to play... I want to play... Yeah, see, the card you're naming, Jason Mind Sculptor, Splinter Twin. I want to see... I want to see a format where those cards are playable again. 
What about this? So I have been a hard no on Pioneer Horizons. I don't want a oh, veteran explorer. I really would love. I want a veteran explorer in modern. I can't believe they haven't put that in modern yet. I've been a hard no on Pioneer Horizons. I still am. What I could get behind, I think. What about this idea? So you know, Watsi wants to profit off of uh, off of their formats. What about this idea? What do you think of Pioneer Horizons? But it's all reprints from cards that were used to be playable in modern primarily. What about rather than Pioneer Horizons adding new, you know, alchemy style cards into the format? What if we were adding like cards that used to be playable in modern, but got power crept out by Modern Horizons uh, one and two. So you're getting like your dark confidants in like, uh Tarmogoyfs and soul wardens and all the things that we used to play i could almost i could almost i could almost get behind that i think i could uh, no it still would take away from the the problem is it would take away from the a place to play your rotated standard cards but i also want a place to play my rotated modern cards <laughs> i didn't think i was gonna have to deal with that problem of my modern cards rotating but it turns out my modern cards all rotated and i want a place to play my favorite modern cards without just getting a uh, you know stomped by modern horizons honestly i like the inverted ratio of new to old cards in pioneer horizons 90 news uh 90 percent stuff like jason mind sculptor temper the new cards assuming the new ones aren't evoke elementals i'd be cool with that yeah the problem is i just don't trust <laughs> I do not trust Watsi on power level with stuff like that. Yeah, maybe we just need standard or standard horizons. I mean, at this point, with the power level of standard, I think most of those modern cards would be perfectly fine in standard. Like, Tarmogoyf? Tarmogoyf, I do not believe would even be playable in standard. <laughs> I, I don't even think it would be playable. Would Tarmogoyf even be playable? I'm not sure it's even going to be playable. I, I, I am not convinced that it is. Oh, wait, we're up against Burn, aren't we? Oh. Okay. I was thinking about Tarmogoyfs and Standard, not about our matchup. Well, okay, we got bailed out by this March. <laughs> this hand's a little a little sketchy against Burn, actually, with double Necro and nothing early, but the March solves most of life's problems. Cease is scratch. All right, hang on. You might get to see a cat. Just a minute. Cease is literally scratching at my door. Yes, I hear you. I hear you, Cease. I hear you. I hear you, Cease. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter, Cease? What? What? Yeah. You're going to have to come say hi to people. You're going to have to come say hi. If you're going to scratch on the door, you're going to have to say hi. Now all the people want to see you. Can you say hi? Can you say hi to all the people? They want to see you. See? Look. Yeah. See, you can come in. Can you say hi? Yeah. Wait, where are you going? Say hello. See? Can you meow? Can you meow? You were just meowing. Give me a meow in the mic. Oh, you got long nails, Cease. So careful. Careful. Well, there's your there's your Cease for the day. Ah, oh, that cat. Oh, now you're meowing. I just picked you up. <laughs> oh, pass the turn. Do you think Watsi will move forward doing timeless anthologies, starting small, uh, adding stuff in smaller batches instead of whole Horizon style sets? Yes, but um, I also think we're going to get the full Horizon style sets. They've already said, like, Modern Horizons is coming into the format. Uh, Modern Horizons 3 will be released on Arena. So, so I think it'll really be... Oh, how greedy are we? How greedy are we? How dry I am. Nobody knows how dry I am. Um, uh, I want to play Necro. But I also think they will do anthologies. Uh, I think we'll get, like, timeless anthologies. Well, so they haven't said that they're bringing, like, Modern Horizons 2. But we know Modern Horizons 3 that's releasing next summer. Um, that will be on Arena. Hmm. 
So if we play Necro, we drop to 13, 12, 11, 10. We could just die. Yeah, I guess we got to pass. We're going to have to kill something first. Dylan Hunter and Autumn Shank, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, it's going to be hard to print a one drop that's better than Ragavan, but. Uh, let's go six. Exile, exile. Uh, it's going to be hard to print a card that's just better than Ragavan. Please don't kill it. No, we, we need this life opponent. Oh, dirty, 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 dirty tricks. Okay, yeah. Well, well played opponent. Well played, Mono Red. But what they can do... Oh, we draw another march. <clears throat> but we can't, we don't have black mana, so we can't necro. Oh, oh, we're like one off by, we're like one off by everything to be able to pull this off. Ah, <sighs> so we can march, but it's not very good. We can play Karn, but we probably die. Do you think adding time, uh, dredge to timeless would break the format? No, I don't think it would necessarily break the format, but it would, it would put another like removal check style deck in the format, which I don't know if, I don't know if people would enjoy having the play pattern. Yeah, uh, once she starts meowing, she sometimes does not stop. What are you doing back there? Are you climbing on my magic cards? She's, I, I don't know if you can see her. Can you see her? Cease. I mean, how bad of an idea is this? Let's see. Cease. Yeah, she's standing on this table full of cards by my green screen, just meowing in my, just meowing in my ear. <laughs> what are you doing? Cease, you're, you're literally, you're going to knock those cards over, Cease. That's a whole deck. If you knock those over, you got to clean them up, cat. Cat that. There's rules about that, cat. I'm not cleaning up after you. Are you going to pick up all those cards? Are you going to pick them up? Seize. Are you going to pick them up? Ah, cats. <laughs> Destroying everything. <laughs> Can we kill a swift? I'm still playing magic as this is going on. She's back there, too. She's still doing it. What are you doing, Cease? Cease. What are you doing? Why are you on my table? Come here. Come here. Come here. It's okay. No? You don't want to come here? You want to stay on the cards? All right. All right. I guess that's acceptable. Well, we had to give up our Necro, but we got rid of the Swift Spear. And we got a Necro. Uh, well, that was fortunate. Uh, let's play Karn. We might have a chance. We might have a chance. Dr. Chandler, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cease. You, oh, Cease, you did it. Cease. Cease. You, look at all those cards you kicked over. Oh, Cease. My basic land, Cease. Uh, a cat. Uh, cat. Um, what are we tutoring? Let's take the one ring. The one ring seems good here. <laughs> she's just, oh, she's knocking more. Up. Oh my goodness, cat. It's getting worse. <laughs> no, she's, no, cat. Come on. Can you just get off of there? Oh, cat, careful, careful. Can you get down? How about, how about getting down? No, no, not back, for, uh, not back further. Come here. Oh, come here, come here, that's a cyclonic, you're stepping on a cyclonic, oh, you're so cyclonic rift, oh, cat, you just clawed my cyclonic, she just clawed a cyclonic rift, cat, come on, come on, kitty, come on, come on, come here, oh, cat, come here, come here, oh, 
There you go. Here. It's okay. It's okay. There you go. There you go. Ah! Ah, you clawed my hand now, too. <laughs> <laughs> she did she clawed she clawed a cyclonic rift and then my hand <laughs> let's play this one ring well this stream is uh this stream is taking a a twist <laughs> that's my that's for all my card sorting <laughs> oh she scratched me yeah my my cyclonic rift is now signed by cc hooray <laughs> well done c's <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's it's my it really is like you can't blame an animal, right? Cease doesn't know what a magic card is. Like I'm I'm just joking around. Like I, she she doesn't know any better. So I try I actually try to keep everything up on that table to keep it away from the from the animals. Because Bear will eat it. Bear will just like straight up if I leave cards on the ground. I walked in the I walked in the other day and he was just like Oh, maybe I, he was like, you can see the tooth marks. He was just like chewing on this, <laughs> on this big box full of cards. So I have to, I have to keep everything up or bear will eat it. But if I put it up, then CC will, uh, will chew it. Can we survive another turn? So if we necro here, <clears throat> necro before the gray merchant would be so good. But I don't think we can. All right, let's draw. Let's be greedy. Nick those Ashiok. Well, we got to play the Gray Merchant. Gain back a couple. Hold, hold. Yeah, so I never, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I intended to own a dog. But Cease, uh, Cease came into my life on her own, on her own accord. <laughs> I never I never had a plan to own a cat. Uh but uh sometimes sometimes cats choose you apparently and uh and cease chose me, so <laughs> Can't leave magic cards on the ground because of the dog, can't put them up high because of the cat, can't bury magic cards in the backyard because of the mole god. <laughs> Honestly that would that would probably that would probably be bear too. Bear likes to uh bury things in the backyard. Five dogs and two cats. That's impressive. I don't know. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, that's a demonic tutor. That's a demonic tutor and two dark rituals. There's got to be something we can do here. So we can dark ritual. We can dark ritual. We can necro. We can Bowmaster, Pangya. We can sack the token to Dark uh, to Demonic Tutor to get Gary. Nick those for four. Play Ashiok. Oh, we can't Ashiok, can we? Not quite. So Gary gains us what? Three, four, five, six? Is that enough? Yeah, the problem is we don't have enough mana, though, right? So if we play another Nykthos, we go spend two, gain four, so we get a six, seven, eight. We still end up short. Yeah, I think we just play the Gary. Play the Gary. Feel the Ruin. Pass the turn. I mean, we're at eight, but it's not quite eight because we're taking three from the one ring. If we survive this turn, we should be able to, we should be okay. Do we survive this turn? That's another question. 
opponent. I mean, next turn we definitely are okay because we can Ashiok Necro. Static Discharge. All right, what's that last card? Down to five. We need it not to be burned. Opponent. Attacks. We block. Oh, it's Searing Blaze. It's, uh, it's Searing Blaze or Searing Blood or whatever it is. All right, so we're going to have to get super lucky. So we dropped to two. So we need to... We need to hit March of Otherworldly Light off of these, off of these one ring draws. And we do not. Uh... Hey, what's up, Tazzinger? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Red doesn't really have a Bowmaster effect. Well, I think we just run it back. Run it back, run the play this time, which should be good. I'm surprised it was that close, considering uh, how slow our hand was for against Mono Red. Yeah, the one ring, it does have a drawback. That was one of those games. That was one of those games where the drawback was actually kind of noticeable. Or March, yeah, the Black March. <laughs> Wretched sorrows. Well, all right. I mean, the sand has <laughs> a nearly infinite amount of life gain, which I guess is what we want to see. We could use some more mana or some ways to get some black mana symbols on the battlefield, but... Dragon Rage Channeler and a Mishra's Bobble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, this has gotta this has gotta be enough. If this hand doesn't win against Burn, then I guess we're just not beating Burn. Oh, I mean, we kind of. I think you play Term Turbo Fog. We have Nexus, Reliquary Tower. Um, well, let's play a Swamp and. March away the DRC. Pass the turn. Yeah, no Platinum Imperion. We have Platinum Angel in the sideboard, but... Oh, about it. Saga. And Bobble. Something with Black Mana Symbols would be sweet. Phyrexian Tower. Well, Nykthos. Gil. I was wondering, how would you build the deck around Nether Spirit? So Nether Spirit actually, actually used to see play back in its day. Uh, do we take this hit? Or do we exile a Gary to kill it? One, two, three, four. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, two Garys. You know what? We're going to take it. We're going to take it. We're going to dig it. I like having ah, two, two Garys in a row. This probably makes the most sense. So we can kill the Swift Spear during our turn. And then untap Gary. Untap Gary the turn after that. Opponent's on one land. If we cannot beat the one land, the one land mono red draw with double Gary. <laughs> oh, and triple March. Uh, well, okay. Uh, Phyraxian Tower. March. For three, get back up to 20. Get rid of the Swift Spear. Pass the turn. So Nether Spirit actually has seen play before. Uh, in, in Liliana, like, Pox-style decks. So the best home for it is probably... So Nether Spirit's ability is uh, you can return on your upkeep for free if it's the only creature in your graveyard. So there's actually been like legacy pox decks that are essentially mono black control decks, so mono black land destruction control. And they use Nether Spirit as just their only creature. So eventually it's gonna eventually it's gonna be the card that closes out the game. Well, okay, Grey Merchant. Number one. Back up to 19. Opponent. Yeah, this is not going well for our opponent. Somehow our opponent's still on one land. Okay, there's land number two. Uh, we'll just take it this turn. 
We don't want to use lose this to a hearing blood. Oh, found it. Light up the stage. Saga. Roiling Vortex. There's the Saga. Well, uh, the good news is we have even more Garys. Saga and Citadel on black. I think we have enough Garys that we're going to start beating down. We're at 20. We're at 20 opponents. Going to flip some Sagas. Uh, drawing Karn would actually be good here. Karn for Wormquay would be insane. Are you a fan of churros? So, honestly, I didn't really know what a churro was. So we're going to block with Gary here because if our opponent's going to cast a Searing Blood to kill this, they're not going to be able to Roiling Vortex, so I think it's worth it. Plus, we don't have another Gary in hand. Uh, the only thing that I know about <laughs> uh, churros is a BoJack Horseman episode. Actually, the best BoJack Horseman episode. How many have you actually? How many of you have watched BoJack? Mm. If you never watched BoJack, best I think it might be the the best animated show of all time on the short list at least. But the free churro episode is not only part of the best show, but it's probably the best episode of BoJack. But uh, yeah, what is a churro? <laughs> all that to say, what is a churro? I'm from the the frozen tundra of the Northeast. I feel like churros are like southwestern, southwestern stuff or something. The uh, the last episode's really good too. Uh, the free churro episode though, where he just does the monologue about his relationship with his mother at the funeral. Oh, it's the whole episode is just monologue, and it's so good. Oh, the first. First season only, and I was high as hell. It's the only time I was high. The I think it gets stronger after the first season. It's cinnamon covered fried dough sticks. Oh, that sounds that sounds amazing. I I could go for a troll right now. I think um one, one okay. So we can let's see if we can do all this. One two, Nick those. That's four. Oh, not quite. Well, I guess we just put I guess we just put all of our mana into it and gain some life. So we have nine mana. That means march for eight on the Dragon Rage Channeler. Up to twenty-six. Attack you with both down to eight. Wait, why is this Roiling Vortex not going away? Why is this still there? Oh, that's another <laughs> They just keep exiling Rolling Vortexes. I see. I see. Opponent. Got us all the way back down to 22. If you like dark humor, the real world storytelling, I've been watching Hell of a Boss, and it's amazing. I don't know what Hell of a Boss is. Well, I mean, this is just game, right? Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Fire it up. Hit you down to one, and then Rolling Vortex to finish the deal. Who, who, taking him down, taking him down. Too bad most people only know him as Gob. <laughs> uh, Gob Luth. <laughs> he is. He actually is a really good, uh, a really good actor. Although Arrested Development is, oh boy, that's still hmm, a high point. A high point, I would say, of uh, Will Arnett's career. That card was so good. Have you ever watched Has Been Hootle? Hootle. Hotel? I I haven't. Hell of a boss. Wait, he's Batman? Wait, are we getting salty roped? You're dying to your own. I didn't even kill your opponent. That's your roiling vortex. I will say, if our opponent's salting out, which they appear to be, um, I bet it's not at us as much as missing so many land drops. They did have, I mean, not a justification for. <laughs> for salty roping which you just shouldn't do it's just disrespectful to your opponent but uh i could see how our opponent being stuck on one land for like pretty much most of the game probably made them a little bit frustrated although monorad's kind of a deck that keeps one landers so they're probably playing like 16 lands or something opponent opponent should i should i hit him with a yorgo <laughs> a nice 
See, I don't have... What's a good emote for this scenario? I'm sure Krim has one loaded. Locked and loaded for this scenario. There's got to be a good emote for it. Oh, man. There are so many cards on my floor. That cat. All right, opponent. All right, opponent. We're going to kill you still. The clock has run out. The clock has run out. I guess you shouldn't have played that Roiling Vortex. <laughs> Uh, Crimson emote for this is always have a backup plan. <laughs> Wait, okay, I gotta go to my profile real quick. Habsin Hotel is by the same people who did Hell of a Boss. If you want to watch a more adult animated show, it's amazing. Not as good as Bojack, but a good watch. What uh, what is it on? If I want to watch it streaming, what uh, what streaming service do I go to? Because I like I like animated shows and I don't even know these ones, so I think I would I would probably like it. So I wait I gotta go to my profile. You have two. Ah, uh, emotes. One and one oh, I can. Your can I change the actual? By gains, while your limited rank is tied oh, to so wait. Instead of oops, I can have it say sorry. This is where you'll find wait, how do I how do I do that? You can choose more. Shh. Sound down, Sparky. Swarm on the rise. Obey. Cooperate. Where's my Where's my Karn? I don't have a Karn. Oh, I got all the boring. All I got is a <laughs> an angry cookie, a Teferi, some sort of demon thing. Wait, I don't have a crowd surfing Karn. A pile of. Oh, I thought that was a money taco, but. <laughs> Apparently it's a hedron. It looks like a money taco. Can I just can I buy can I buy a crowd surfing card? Money taco. I mean I guess maybe we maybe I just had the money taco. <laughs> do we just do we just go with the money taco? Hit him with the money taco? Uh alright, so emotes. Boom. And one for limited. Unlock new emotes. So how do I how do I add them? Just click them. Oh, I guess I get all of them. I don't even know what I'll do with all of them. How do I? And then I get phrases. Grab a leg. Why would I ever tell someone? <laughs> Why would I ever tell? That's the only one I need. Grab a leg. I <laughs> I don't know what context I will ever use. Grab a leg, but <laughs> all right. All right, now we're now we're real gamers. Now we're real gamers. We have emotes. <laughs> Grab a leg opponent. That next time, that's gonna be my response. I think when uh when someone starts salty roping, everybody grab a leg. <laughs> uh, backup plan is pretty good. Yeah. See, I gotta I gotta up my emo game. Apparently, when you click use a message, there'll be arrows to left and right. Click to cycle through them. Also, my first stream. Hey, welcome, Aaron Tradeway. Love your YouTube series against the odds. There's a new one coming up tomorrow that I'm actually like super, super excited about. The deck that never could have existed before before this this year. <laughs> it's gonna I what's gonna happen? I'm going to get so much blame from the arena community, I'm pretty sure. Uh so the deck they're playing tomorrow. <laughs> It's one of those decks that I think people are really going to hate. Um, <clears throat> people are really going to hate it, but I could imagine people playing it. And, okay, don't crack that flooded strand opponent. Don't read. No reading. Ah, we got a reader. Where's my... Boom. <laughs> Grab a leg. Grab a leg cracking that fetch land. Um, I got a feeling it's going to be a deck people play on the arena ladder and get really salty about. Uh... Next beer battle stream. Um, so the problem with beer battle streams, I'll have to see. I think uh, I actually don't even know if we activate this. I think we don't. They're probably playing more fetch lands. Um, the problem we've had with beer battle streams is the friends list and challenges being broken. Does anyone know if they fix that? Grab a leg, Ledger Shredder. Grab a leg. My first as well, my wife and I named her some Olive after Saffron Olive. Wait, no. 
Did I miss this story? Aw, well, hello, little Olive. <laughs> I don't know if that story is actually true, but I'm going to pretend like it is because that is super flattering. <laughs> uh, well, when in doubt, necro him out. Sure, connive away, Ledger Shredder. Grab a leg. Oh, all right. So if it's fixed... Uh, if it's fixed, we will, we'll get a viewer battle stream going in the near future. Probably at this point, actually, no, I was going to say, I was going to say wait until after the new set, but maybe we just do it before the new set. Cause we actually have a, we actually have a long delay. Did you hear that there's, uh, they fired everyone apparently that runs early access. <laughs> so there's no early access stream this time because apparently Hasbro fired everyone that Wow, it's going to be another one of those Necros. <laughs> Ooh, okay, another Necro into Infinite Lands. Uh, that's okay, that's okay. We have a Nykthos and Ashiok, so we'll still be okay, but that was kind of awkward. Yeah, that was a bad... Ooh. All right. Hmm. Uh, yeah, let's Dark Ritual... And yeah, Bowmaster. Do your conniving, do your conniving. I love early access. It's such a fun community and brewing. Nice to get an early look. Ah, me too. It's one of my favorite streams. Getting the cards early, like, it's cool, but I like it for the same reason you said, which is it's like this community celebration of magic. And I feel like that's like missing sometimes and it's a day when everyone comes together the the spiky players or the pro players are playing the jank players are playing the content like everyone comes together and checks out the new cards and has fun that's something that uh i think is really going to be missing so i hope they bring it back but all that to say since uh since there's no early access i don't believe we actually get to play the full spoilers up friday for murders but it's like two weeks until the the set actually comes out so maybe we can do a viewer battle stream while we're waiting for the new set to come out since we have such a such a long wait this time well let's play nick those let's make a smidge of mana let's use that smidge of mana to play an ashiok not getting spell pierce because there's a chalice on one and now the real fun begins uh necro necro Actually, let's take up Ashia. Can we hit a Reliquary Tower? That would be sweet. Reliquary Tower. Hmm. Uh, well, we will put Ashia to exile. Take the card. Draw a few cards. Exile a few cards. Lose zero life. And that's probably good enough for now. Do a little attacking. Hit you down to 10. Pass the turd. Yeah, Necro Ashiok's so wild. Yeah, we have a cat named Saffron. My son's name is Oliver after Saffron Olive. Your favorite streamer and your favorite YouTuber. You brought us together so our son is named after better known Saffron Olive. That is such a that is such a cool story. That's that is such a cool story. Well, uh Hello, hello, little uh, little olive. Oh, that's that's so good. Oh, I think we get rid of it. Actually, let's get rid of a Karn. We probably don't need two Karns. Let's do that. I feel like our opponent hurts themselves more with the Chalice than it hurts us. Yeah, we don't really care, honestly. Like losing Dark Ritual is slightly annoying, but our deck is not one drop heavy. Like it's pretty much it's pretty much just uh just the Necro or just the Dark Ritual for Necro. Uh, about it. I mean, so it's a little awkward that our opponent has a 5 7. But unless our opponent's literally going to kill us here, we can gain a ton of life next turn. Landline binding, sure. Going after the Ashiok. Well, I guess we do our necroing now then. 
We don't get the cards till our next end step, but we're gonna need him eventually. All right, go ahead. Never forget, <laughs> yeah, the the synergy is pretty nice. Uh, grab a leg, opponent. Grab a leg. Opponent hits us. Down to eight. How many board wipes do you think is too many for the new Judith? Huh, so are you playing actual like damnation board wipes, or are you playing uh, like? Things that combo with Judith board wipes. So I think the most powerful thing Judith's gonna do, right, is probably like either turn really cheap things like end the festivities into board wipes or gain a ridiculous amount of life with Blasphemous Axe, Star of Extinctions. So those, <laughs> that's, a, that's the one emote I know. That's, a, that's the only emote I know. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to be a real gamer. I'm trying my best. Um, so that makes six mana. Six mana, seven mana. We do need to not die. Dying would be a shame. All right, let's go with another Nykthos. More mana. March for nine? On the Ledger Shredder? Gain some life. Hit you with the dorks. Shit. Nykthos is such a ridiculous card as well. <laughs> maybe they should... Maybe they should uh, think twice about Nykthos. Nykthos is so busted. <laughs> We're doing all this with like three lands. That is the power of Nykthos. So I would say if you're building Judith and Commander, if they're Wrath that... S wow, it's all the cards. If they're Wrath that synergize with... If they're Wrath that synergize with Judith, then I think I'm fine with playing a ton of them. But if I'm playing Judith, I'm probably want all of my Wrath to synergize and be like Blasphemous Axe uh, and so forth. And I'm probably not playing many or even any like Damnation Wrath. I don't even know, but I even play Toxic Deluge in Judith. I don't even know if I play Dox Toxic Deluge and I play that in every single deck. Cause I probably want all my, uh, all my Wrath to be Wrath that would that would synergize with uh, my commander. Okay. So we have six mana here. So we can play Karn. We can take down Karn. We can grab a Noxious Gear Hulk. Nick those. Noxious Gear Hulk. Kill your bobble. Hit ya. Down to three. And we are kind of dominating this game. Necro, necro, necro. Game back that life, turn it into cards. And. I know you guys were memeing on the Mole God in the podcast, but what about it being Pioneer Explorer Bard class deck? Ooh, so. <clears throat> so in Pioneer Explorer Bard class, I don't know if I'm super hyped about... I don't know if I'm super hyped about playing the Mole God, but I do think a card spoiled today is actually going to be really good. And I think this card might be a be a bit of a sleeper, but I think there is a card that was spoiled today that I'm very interested in for Pioneer Bard class. So you could play you could play Molgod. That's fine. If you want to play Molgod, I think it's fine. It's going to cost 2 mana. GG. Oh, grab a leg. Grab a leg. Um it's going to be it's going to be a uh, 2 mana and it's got a big body. The deck is not that good at giving things haste. The card that I'm really interested in for Bard class is actually uh, Yaris Roar of the Gods. And I think Yaris, I think this might be a sleeper card because people are going to read this and be like, oh, this is just like a commander card or whatever. But I think this card's actually pretty good. So Yaris, four mana gruel legendary 4-4 four, four cent Druid. 
Other creatures you control have haste. That's the ability that I think puts this into Bard class. Because Bard class is often playing uh, like five mana Samet to try to give things haste. Yaris is just like a better legendary way to give things haste. Yaris also is a really cool morph card that actually has infinite combo potential. Uh, you can you can go infinite with with this and <laughs> Ash Cloud Phoenix. Ash Cloud Phoenix. So Yaris's other ability is when a face down creature you control dies, if it's a permanent, you return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control and then turn it face up. So when a face down creature dies, comes back into play and flips face up, uh, Ash Cloud Phoenix is a morph creature that says when it dies, return to the battlefield face down. When it's turned face up, deals two damage to each player. So if you have an Ash Cloud Phoenix with Yaris in a sack outlet, you can sack the Ash Cloud Phoenix. The Ash Cloud Phoenix is going to come back into play face down with its ability. Then you can sack the face down Phoenix. It's going to come back into play face down and flip up because of Yaris's ability. When it flips face up, you hit everyone for two. Then you do it again and again, as long as you have more life than your opponent, or if you have a blood artist or something, uh, you just, win the game on the spot so you got like weird combo potential you got bard class potential yaris i think is actually like super cool it's a it's such a cool card one of my one of my favorite cards of the day that maybe is not i don't think people are going to think of it as a competitive card i think people are going to think of it as a meme card but i think it's actually like really good Yeah, isn't it cool when you see a card from like 2014 that combos with something and you know with stuff like that at least I assume, I shouldn't say I know. I assume that it's not intentional. I don't think that, I don't think that Watsi's sitting there and thinking, okay, is there any way in Pioneer or Modern that this card could accidentally go infinite? So, you know, it's just one of those cool quirks of like, you make a bunch of magic cards and sometimes they synergize together and do cool things. Can I ask what you're planning for the first... Uh, Murders at Karlov Manor meme or dream video. So honestly, I haven't gotten I haven't gotten to the point of really working on decks for videos yet. So normally when a new set comes out, uh, spoiler season. Uh, do we just go? You know what? We're gonna go for it. If you got the spell pierce, you got the spell pierce. But we came here to play turn one necro. We're gonna we're gonna turn one necro. Oh. <laughs> I was not actually expecting that to work. All right. Well, this should go well. <laughs> Traditionally, when you have the ability to draw 19 extra cards, the game goes well. Can we find our reliquary tower? <laughs> the missing piece of the dream. So what a... Oh, we actually can demonic tuner it. Um, so what would your pick be for, like, first against the odds card so far? I think so. Here's the, here's the early... The early front runners. Oh, I'm I'm excited for Kringo's Buzz Cutter too, just because we don't get a we don't get much land destruction anymore. So I'm hyped that uh I'm hyped that it's land destruction at all. Um but no, normally when a set comes out during spoiler season, because I'm doing daily spoilers, usually I don't get to the point of uh of actually being able to brew too much. But uh once spoiler season ends, which is Friday, that's when I'll kind of shift gears from Initial reactions of of cards or whatever to <sighs> Alright, good enough. From like initial gut reactions to actually working on decks for uh for those cards. Well let's play a Nick though, so let's run out of Bowmasters. Ping ya. Get a few cards with our Necro. Well, we found another necro. Uh, discard four. That's a lot of cards. One, two, three, four. Let's try something like that. So, what are the what are the early picks for against the odds or meme or dream cards from this set? So, I here's the things that have. Oh boy, we got all these silly clue cards. So here's the cards that have kind of spoken to me. Of course, Anzrag the Mole God, just because 
I mean, it's Molgod. That by itself, I think, is notable enough. Are you planning to build some commander decks for Goldfish Commander Clash for Murder of Carlo Manor? Yes, there will be. I think the plan is to have two episodes that are focused on Murder of Carlo Manor. There's probably going to be, I think, an episode showing off the pre-cons. And then a kind of a more anything goes episode where we just play the commanders from the set that we like or whatever. So I think that's the I think that's the plan as far as I know. Leyline of the, yes, I didn't get to it yet, but Leyline of the Guild Pack is also very high on the list of, <laughs> on the list of possibilities. Hmm. Let's play the land. Yeah, I guess we just passed, flashing another Bellmasters. So, okay, so, Molgod. I think Molgod is a solid mid-tier against the odds or meme or dream card. Ex Expediated, expedited, expedited, expedited inheritance, I think is actually, if I can figure out something to do with it, I think that's a card that I'm just really intrigued by. I have no idea what to do with it, so maybe I never figure it out, but I think uh, inheritance is also on the list. As far as the rest of the mythics, I'm sure we'll play Delaney because it's a Panharmonicon and I love Panharmonicons. Maybe like Ultimatum deck with uh, Conspiracy Unraveler. Massacre Girl, I think, is just good. Oh, I think there's a way to build, like, a Vanicar, Vanifar Blink deck that could be really sweet for against the odds. Maybe Land Destruction with Undergrowth Retcon? Recon? Uh, Guild Pact, of course. Leyline of the Guild Pact, also very high on the against the odds possibility list. Let's get past all these clue cards. But I think that's good. I'm trying to think, probably something with cases... It seems like a oh doppel doppelgang. <laughs> Do, I just want to cast doppelgang. I don't even I don't even care what I'm casting it on. I just wanna I just wanna cast it. Doppelgang seems like such a cool card to resolve. Yeah, Kaya trying to figure out how to make Kaya work is a good one too. Wall of Chaos for the 85th month. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Inheritance pyroclasm in Layla Blade Reforged. Ooh. Ooh, I actually like the sounds of that. That could be really good. I like that idea a lot, actually. Well, go to combat. Hit you with the dorks. Yeah, doppelgangsters just seem like... <laughs> and I think there's ways to combo with that, too. Which, <laughs> I want to go infinite. Like, if you go infinite with doppelgang, you're going to go infinite in every way possible. Like, it's going to be such a spectacular herd. I think you can build a deck where Doppelgang can infinitely copy every proven on the battlefield. Which sounds like a pretty spectacular way to win a game of Magic. <clears throat> Do we just Necro? You know what? Let's just card and whatever. You got a counter? Use it, opponent. Use it. Uh, wow, it resolved. Alright, so Karn gonna tick down. What do we take though? Uh, I mean, if we take liquid metal coating, it's gonna force them to answer car, and that's probably correct. Yeah, let's take the coating. <laughs> if I don't see any get sides where you break arena with doppelgang, I will be very sad. Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. I think we'll hit the token limit though, unfortunately. Silly token limit. So I don't know if we can actually break it because of the token limit. What about face down matters for Pioneer for first against the odds? Ooh. So I don't know. I don't. I have been working on some Pioneer slash Explorer stuff. That's going to be coming uh, in the near future. I don't know about Pioneer for the first uh, the first against the odds for the set. That would be that would be something we've never done before. Maybe that's the reason to do it. Wow, that worked. Uh. Well, opponent, opponent, opponent. Can you kill our Karn? I mean, either you kill our Karn or this game's oh wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. GG, GG. Once Karn starts doing this, the game usually ends. About it, floating a mana. Now you kill it? Hmm, that was interesting timing. <laughs> Opponent waited until we blew up one of their triumphs, and then they decided this aggression will uh, will not stand. You know what? 
I'm pretty sure if they had a counter, they would have used it. I'm pretty, pretty sure. Necro, number two. One. Do you think that Kadena, Morph Precon Commander, will get a lot better from the new disguise mechanic? Ooh, let me, let me read Kadena real quick. Uh, so, I would think yes. I just want to make sure that uh, it does it does work with disguise. Okay, it does. <clears throat> it doesn't refer to morph specifically. So, Kadena, Kadena, the first base on creature your spell each turn counts three less to cast. So, essentially, you get to disguise once for free each turn or morph once. And then, uh, when a face down creature ETB is under your control, you get to draw a card. The question is what good disguise cards are in their colors but yes um i think it definitely improves they're just there's not that many morph sets or face down creature sets so just getting more support in general i think is a a really big deal for something like kadena that just the typical is that you're if you got like a human commander deck every set's probably giving you something if you got like an elf commander deck most sets are probably giving you something if you have a kadena a kadena morph deck it's probably like once every decade you get something that specifically supports what your commander is trying to do so uh this is this is a set for kadena i think it's finally getting more face down support yeah, if you get a frog commander deck, you you never get any support, I don't think. <laughs> who has a who has a frog commander deck though? I don't know. I guess they printed this. Oh, what is the name? A Amibian or whatever. The the Simic frog. That card's actually kind of cool. So I guess you actually could have a frog commander deck. We're at eight. We're at eight. How do we just win this game? Four, five, six. So we can't. Hmm. We kind of want life gain, honestly. We are at eight. Let's get in the danger zone. Um, yeah, I guess we take worm coil. Play the land. Worm coil. Go to combat. Hit you with the bowmaster. I mean, I guess we can gain a bunch of life at some point with uh, this march as well. Down to six. Jack Frost, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup, Jeffrey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Well, okay, we have we have plenty of cards. We'll pitch the card. Do you think super friends could be good in standard? Placewalkers seem to have gotten more powerful with them only being one per set. Yeah, so on one hand, there's less planeswalkers to choose from than in the past but i think that watsi if they're only doing one of that they're gonna make sure that that one is really strong or unique or flavorful so i think in the end it maybe it maybe evens out for super friends i mean i don't think they're going back to the the like war of the spark era like the mass numbers does make it easier but yeah i think that the planeswalkers are strong enough that it could work would cloak be better if it was a vanilla two two for three uh for two then a three for a ward two 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 so would the cloak mechanic be better if it was a vanilla two two for two then three for a ward two 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 ha ha you have activated my onboard trap card um box amber sure bonus passes okay how do we just we got to end this game this game must end this game must end so opponent's trying to combo with emery opponent's at nine oh uh, what if we demonic tutor for another nick those one two three so if we play ashiok And then we sacrifice this. Make mana. Demonic tutor. For a Nykthos. This should be enough, I think. Nykthos. Make six. Bowmaster. Pangya. Gray Merchant. 
drain ya, kill ya, and uh, yeah, that was, that was, we didn't even need to kill the Uro. Didn't even need to kill the Uro or the Emery for that matter. <laughs> I mean, this deck actually seems pretty... Oh, grab a leg! I forgot! This deck actually seems uh, seems pretty good. I kind of like this deck. Do we have any new any new spoilers? Oh, no. Dramatic Accusation. Three mana. Enchant Creature. ETB's Tap Enchanted Creature. Uh, Alright, so it's just one of... Uh... Well, actually, okay. Two mana shuffle into their library. That actually is an upgrade. I was going to say it was just another tapping enchantment, but it's actually a little a little bit more than that. So, chat, I asked you, ooh, what do you think about Outrageous Robbery? Is Outrageous Robbery actually a, actually a, a playable constructed card? So, on the Cloak question, I think Cloak would be better if it was less mana. Although, ah, boy, I'm really going... It's very close. So in general, less mana is always going to mean better. The problem is, if you look at the current popular cards in Standard, no, so here's the problem with Morph. If there was not Ward, on, uh, on Cloak and on Disguise, it would be stone unplayable because of Cut Down, right? And also play with Fire sees a lot of play. But the fact that your three mana thing dies to a removal spell that 45% of decks are playing 3.3 copies of, it would just be, in everything else, everything better than that as well, I think that would mean it would just not see play at all. Maybe being two mana instead of three would change that. Maybe that would make it okay. Uh, but I think that, ah, boy, I'm going to go with cheaper being better, even though I do think the ward is very relevant. The fact that it's three to cut down a disguised creature or a cloak creature is a pretty big deal and might actually give it a chance to uh, to see play. I don't want to cast spells to steal. I don't want to cast spells to steal the cards I cast. I want to cast stuff that steals actual stuff that I don't have to cast. Yeah, that's that actually makes sense. I think ward two is required. Two mana two two ward one would be the bare minimum. Yeah, without the ward, without the ward, it would be rough. I wonder is ward two enough? Ward two might actually be the right number. So outrageous robbery is pretty sweet. Everything makes a clue. Oh, what do you think about Intrude on the Bind? People have been going, when this first came out, everyone's like, oh, you know, it's another uh, another reverse factor fiction. Reverse factor fictions are bad. But if you think about it like a Muldrifter, the card's kind of wild. But thinking about prudering one or two pecons from the set, based only on the face commanders, how would you rank them? Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's, let's tier rank. <laughs> How would I rank these commanders? So if I was going to buy one of these decks, just based on the commander alone, not knowing anything else, the full decks come out tomorrow, the best answer is probably actually like, tomorrow you get the full deck list and use that to decide. But if we're going by the information we have today, so we have Crossed Eyes of the Glade, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, Naya Legendary Dryad Detective, whenever a creature you control, that so was turn face up this turn, deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, tap it, turn target face down attack, Second creature you control face up. Demir gets Mirko, Obsessive Theorist. Three mana, one, three, Flying Vigilance, Vampire Detective. Whenever you severely put a plus one, plus one counter on it, being your end step, you may return target creature card with power less than its power from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter. Morska, Morska, <laughs> uh, three mana, two, three, in Ban Videlkin Fish Detective. No max hand size. Beginning your upkeep, investigate. Whenever you draw your second card of the turn, put two counters on it. And then Nella Borka Impulsive Incu Accuser. Four mana, two, four, Boros Legend, a uh, human detective. Vigilance. Whenever it attacks, suspect target creature, then goad all suspected creatures. Whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls, deals combat damage to one or more of your opponents, you and its controller may draw a card. So, uh, I would say, honestly, as much as I love Ska, which I, I don't know if I love Ska, but I, I like some Ska, um, <laughs> I actually would rank more Ska as the lowest of the face commanders. To me, it just doesn't speak to me, but this shows how personal magic is, because when we were talking about doing a, um, <laughs> A pre-con episode of Commander Clash, Phil was the first person to chime up and claim a commander, and he immediately went for Morska. That was his number one pick out of all these commanders. So I think, to me, I read Morska, and it sounds just kind of boring. It's just like, 
okay, you make a clue that can draw you a card. You just kind of grow your commander. You have no max hand size. It doesn't really push you to do anything other than be Simic good stuff or Bant good stuff, essentially. All it wants you to do is, like, draw a bunch of cards and it's going to be fine. Uh, so I don't think it's bad or anything, but it doesn't really... I like commanders that push me in, in more of a direction and don't just push me into, like, play all the best cards in my colors. So I would actually rank Morska at the bottom. Although, like I said, if you were asking Phil this, it would be opposite. So I think this would be the number four on my list. Uh, I think that Mirko, there's a decent amount of support for Surveil. Um, I've actually been working on a surveil budget deck that might be coming up at some point, uh, in constructed in 60 card formats. So there is enough support for it with a errata. And then you get some reanimation synergies. Uh, Nelly Borka, it seems kind of fun. I actually think this might be the most fun to play around. You're like making the table attack. There's a lot of politics. And then I think the face down thing is interesting just because you have morph, you have mega morph, you have disguise, you have cloak, you have manifest. And Naya is good colors for that. I would probably rank them Morska 4, Mirko 3, cross to Nelly Borka 1. Just because I think Nelly Borka is the most, it's the most unique, right? So, uh, and I value that a lot in my in my rankings. When it comes down to it, I put a lot of value in things that are unique and do something that other commanders don't do. And I think this will just be a fun one to play with, right? You get some control over combat by goading and suspecting things. And then you get some control over the politics by being able to let other people draw cards. So that would probably be my ranking. Number one, number two, number three, number four. But I think really they're, they're all fine. They're all fine. What am I playing in Commander Clash? I'm actually not sure yet. I told the rest of the crew, pick what you, I'll take whatever's left over. Pick, uh, pick what you want this time. I'll, I'll grab whatever's, whatever no one else chooses. So I know Phil grabbed Morska. I'm imagining Krim is playing Mirko because it's Demir and that's just Krim. So I would guess that Richard's going to pick between Nelly Borka and Crossed. And I would imagine Richard picks Nelly Borka because it's kind of like a secret rendezvous. <laughs> the ability of having two players draw a card. So my guess is I'm probably going to be playing Crossed, but I, I don't know if I actually know that yet. Hey, thank you, Ruby Ripper. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. Sad News Bears, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Uh, so what do we learn about this deck today? So the Ashy Active Ocean deck, it's got some really neat synergies. Uh, I would say if you're looking for something different to play in Timeless, I think the deck's actually, it actually seems pretty competitive. It seems pretty good. I love Black Devotion decks, and the power of Necro with Ashiok actually has a really unique element to this. Something that we've never had in a Black Devotion. I mean, we've played Black Devotion in every format, from Standard back to Modern, uh, Commander even, every single format. Ashiok Necro has a really unique twist to this that I just haven't really seen before, and it's really fun to play with. It opens this, like, combo finish. You can literally draw your entire deck. So I would say this deck's actually, like, pretty good, and I find it really fun to play kind of expensive to put together, I guess, but that's timeless for you. So if you like devotion decks, I actually think this seems like a really solid, uh, a really solid build for timeless. If you're interested in such things, <sighs> Crib and Richard said they play differently this year. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they will. We'll see. We'll see if that, uh, <laughs> We'll see if that actually happens. Uh, anyway, everyone, I think that brings us to the end of our stream for today. So uh, let's see. So next week, next week, uh, let me actually, let me look this up really quick. Uh, Murders at Carlo Manor release date arena. I'm curious. Okay, so arena releases February 6th. Hmm. So are you pretty confident? Are you pretty confident that, uh, are y'all pretty confident that the, the friend mode has been fixed? Can we actually challenge each other? Okay, let's go with this. Okay, let's go with this. Next week's stream. So we have a stream before we get access to murders at Karlov Manor. Uh, next week's stream, let's plan on doing a viewer battle stream. So, uh, send me an email. Saffron Olive, mtdgoldfish.com. 
let me know let me know that you want to play in it um assuming that the friend challenge actually works we'll do a viewer battle stream next tuesday check out everyone's decks and then the next week we'll get, uh, start playing with new murder stuff if we find out that uh it just doesn't actually work because it's broken uh then we'll then we'll go to a plan b but i think that'll be our our plan like hopefully if all goes well we'll be able to do uh to do a bit of to do a bit of viewer battling next week so reminders on the way out the door of course uh on the youtube channel tons of stuff rest of spoilers set review stuff gameplay stuff see you tomorrow's against thoughts it's a super uh super sweet one hey see you cat cam fan yeah i'm gonna have to go clean up after the cat replay youtube for all the old streams and one more reminder that our sponsor today is card kingdom if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash ftg goldfish oh goodbye little olive thank you thank you for hanging out at the stream so thanks so much for being awesome everyone most importantly thanks to all of you y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular and i love you all so very much i hope you have an amazing night have a great week and i will see you next week to have even more fun until then be good and i will talk to you soon